Good morning, gamers, and get up, get loud. It's game day. It's time to play some Rocket League here and close out the RLCS Winter Cup for North America. Four teams remain. One will be crowned Winter Cup champion. Two of them have already been to a grand finals here. Can we see? But they're all on the same side of the bracket. They're going to be playing as someone new for the winner here. I'm excited. I'm your host, Wave Punk, and I've got Gibbs. I've got Stax. I've got Dazarin. Gentlemen, it's time to see who's going to win this whole thing. Stax, how you doing? I feel like I haven't seen you on up, up here on a pre-show in a long time. <laughs> it, it, it's been a while. I think, what, maybe the last one might have been uh, World's Wild Card. Uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good, though. Been a uh, been a busy February, and we're right at the midway point of the split. And we are. We're we're like we're literally right here in the middle, Daz. This is a uh, this is this is the the, the hump day, the, the 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 turning point of the season for everybody. Yeah, yeah, turning point. I like that. That is definitely a good way to look at things. Like you can see where we are, the Winter Cup right there. Still a lot of Rocket League to go. Of course, I, we haven't even started even getting into those World Championship conversations yet because we're still trying to figure out who's going to make this major. It's just so much to think about and so much competition. It's why I love this yeah. season. And we talk about the turn in point as well. I think a lot of late NA teams want this to be a turn in point in their season because a lot of teams that we expected to be near the top are not having a good fall or a good winter at this point. So I think a lot of those teams are hoping that they can bounce back in spring and spring obviously has a lot more points on the line. So you can still sneak into that world championship if you have a very good spring. Is there any team that in the in the Winter Cup it could still be considered like a turning point for them other than like maybe FaZe given how things went in the Winter Open? Like I feel like all the other teams like this is like, nope, we're just chugging along, doing what we've been doing the whole season. Well, it's like turning point in terms of like a V1 or a Fury of like, they hope that after this tournament, they can have a turning point coming through. But yeah, like I think we have our top four teams, I believe in uh, North America that are left yep. in this tournament. So I feel like day one was hectic and we had a lot of these hero stories, these underdog stories. And then day two, we kind of went right back to let's have all the favorites win. And now let's get to who is the best in North America. Well, I guess, uh, I guess it also is this, this entire kind of last few weeks has been a turning point for complexity who really struggled yeah. in the fall but now are here having a wonderful winter split and they are a top contender to make it to land diego folks get your tickets exclamation point tickets you want to come to a dream hack you want to come see all of us you want to come see the teams play get as close as you can but you know at a respectable distance from all your favorite rocket league <laughs> players folks. it's gonna be amazing exclamation point tickets april 7th through 9th in san diego make sure you go if you can folks it'll be a lot of fun let's talk about what happened yesterday lots of matches four matches in total um all of them pretty much going the way we expected them to here uh let's talk about g2 versus ssg though we started off with uh, honestly the best match of the day gives oh absolutely the early match of the day i think two favorites to make the winter major space station they came out strong against G2, but we talked about this. If G2 goes to the distance, we think they have a better shot. Game seven, not a strong point of G2s lately, but they prevail here. But what a close series. Daniel was a true carry for Space Station early on. Then LJ and Arsenal got involved on Neo Tokyo. G2 scored the first goal in every single game. Space Station battled back, but in the end, game seven overtime goes to G2. Space Clan. Boy, how about the work they put on the poor Pittsburgh Knights? They just absolutely hammered this squad. First killer had himself a day. He's averaging almost a goal and a half per game in this event. And CRR for complexity is right on his heels. At one point, FaZe Clan scored nine unanswered goals. They just dominated. Yeah, you talked about CRR and complexity. I mean, with this Koi roster playing against them, we didn't necessarily expect Koi to make it this far. They've been on a losing streak. They finally started winning, but complexity has been on a tear. Keep in mind, they made Grand Finals last event. They're looking to continue that run. Koi, though, I think shocked a lot of people with their efforts taking a couple of games off of them. But ultimately, when it came down to it, Complexity was able to kind of weather that storm and close out the series. And probably the biggest favorites versus the biggest underdogs. We have Gen G, number one in the world versus M80. Everyone thought the series would be over. Three close games early on, all one goal games. M80, though, they only scored one goal through those first three. But then the demos came out and M80 battled back. They scored 11 goals in games four and five to bring it to Wasteland. But it is Gen G. They always find a way to win. And they got it done on Neo Tokyo, actually. And like, but M80, 
put up a fight. And I think everyone now has them on the radar for a top five spot to make that winter major, which at the start of the split, no one was talking about M80 at all, but now they're right in that conversation. You can see the bracket of the, the games we've got to play here today. Two semifinals and the grand finals waiting for us here on Championship Sunday. But score final action was exciting. I mean, honestly, that was that Gen G versus M80 is maybe the most exciting six game series where the number one team in the world went up three games to start things <laughs> off and only allowed one goal. Like that, you describe that down and they're like, it was exciting. Like, no, that's never exciting. But what a rally there from M80. Was, they, I'm oof. excited to keep watching them as they move into the invitational. Yeah, we talk about Rock League and momentum. M80 had all the momentum in that series late, and Gen.G just barely survived. But hey, that's what good teams do. They find a way to win, like even when it's not going their way. But M80, though, no one's talking about Lion Blaze, Percy, or Kinsey at all coming into the split. They're on the radar to make the Winter Major, which like never happens for three players that are kind of like not known in terms of being on a top team in North America. That does not happen. It's always the same five, maybe like maybe two extra teams in that mix, but M80 is coming out of like the 14th ranked team in NA and they might make winter major. It's a huge performance from them. Yeah. And I really hope they have another big performance in this invitational because I want that major race to be spicy. I mean, as someone that's been following the, uh, the like Alpine, Alpine torrent story for pretty mm -hmm. much from beginning to now end, um, Kinsey and, and Percy are both names I'm very familiar with. But I mean, I mean, Stacks, I feel like all three of these players are players that have had that like they are the best player on their team. They just need to get two other players around them that can support them. Now here they are all three together. Yeah, and they and they really um, personify the idea of breaking through, which is kind of the theme of this upcoming yeah. major, right? And and they're they're trying to have that breakout performance where you know you, you think of these guys, especially in Lion Blaze's case, as you know just a CRL player. And you know, the lines between CRL and RLCS quality might be starting to get blurred just a little bit. And with Lion Blaze, the up and down career that he's had lately, uh, this is uh, as good as it could get for him. The first uh, team ever in North America outside the top 10 rankings to go back to back in top eights. Wonderful. you done there by M80. But yesterday, all the favorites did win, actually, in the end of the day. So uh, let's talk through the top plays of the day, Daz. We had some bangers. Let's, let's take a look at some of these top plays. Number three, you're giving me Daniel. Look at this shot. This flip reset is beautiful. I saw some people comparing it to the squishy shot. You know which one I'm talking about. Oh, look yeah. at this. Get the control plays Ooh. it low atomic tries to put a hand up but he just can't stop it phenomenal work here from daniel he had a lot of individual performances and that was just one of them number two let's take a look at this this is the saves from chronic chronic was on twitter talking about how defense is harder than offense but he made it look easy i mean one two three saves look at these angles the recovery he said wait oh you're going low i got that too the third man follows up it just wasn't enough Beautiful stuff there from Chronic to be able to just build that defensive wall for Gen.G. Now, number one play. A lot of people are looking at this one. This one from CRR. This is a game tying goal against Koi. You look at it initially. Oh, this is it, Mekki. What? Look at that. Zero seconds on the clock. He has to put it to the top left. That's the only place Aqua can't get to. <laughs> no one else is doing anything like that. My goodness, the clutch factor from CRR complexity. That's why that's the top play of the day. Gotta on love it catch. here. Yeah, the cat, it's perfect. I mean, yeah, perfect placement. Zero seconds, no room for error, half the score. Brilliant stuff to force overtime there. Those are your top three plays of the day, and maybe we'll beat them today here on Championship Sunday. And let's say it's, it's we'll, we'll start we'll start to move forward and talk about the games here in a second uh, that we're they're going to play here. Give you guys a primer for what's coming up. But before we do, let's 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 talk a little bit about let's just play a game. We're gonna borrow this from um, the European boys on their pre-show. They play this game called In Your Own Words. What's gonna happen is oh, no. we're gonna set up a statement. I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna boy. I'm gonna Here talk to Stacks and say, hey Stacks, in your own words, and then I'm gonna say a thing that Stacks disagrees with, and he's gotta pretend like he likes it. He's gotta pretend like he agrees with it, and it's gonna be fun to watch him squirm and try to play devil's advocate here. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, no. 
I right. haven't. <laughs> All right. Stacks, Stacks, I'm going to start with you. I'm going I'm to direct it towards you. Uh, Stacks, in your in your own words, uh, explain why players should tweet right after a loss. It's like right after the loss is over more often. Why is that good for them? <laughs> so the big thing about building your brand is generating content, right? And you got to get oh, those boy. impressions on all the forms of social mm, media. That's right. When do you get the most engagement? When you're being your true self. And the best time to give the true, authentic experience is when you are posting at the most emotionally charged time that you possibly can. That is right after a series. Whether you win, whether you lose, whether you don't know what the tiebreakers are and accidentally have to play another series, doesn't matter. Give us the real, authentic you so everybody can react and judge and you get all those impressions all those clicks and all that money and don't delete it and don't delete it do not delete it no No. leave it out because the internet never forgets i need to use that for first touch too so don't delete it got a screenshot (laughs) all right stack Uh, all right guys i think it's your turn yep in your own words tell us how just in a certain light money talks is actually an excellent (laughs) rap track (laughs) <laughs> so yes money money talks is a very great song the lyricism from james bond is definitely unparalleled and i think that you know he goes into this great story about friendship about trust and about how it's all just shattered uh by decisions that involve financial uh gain from a certain individual that we may not speak of that being said when you look at the video as well the video was definitely well edited uh you can follow along with the lyrics in case you just didn't understand the initial statement and i think it really (laughs) encompasses james james's pain all in one sentence and also you know the, the credits at the end it was edited it was mixed and mastered by isaac app so you know that this was really you know really really personal and you know, really put his, his energy and heart behind it. So yeah, that was a very good song. Yeah, love that. <laughs> well done, YouTube well James Spot, go check it out. Money talks. If you haven't seen it, you gotta watch it. It's, it's good. It's good. Great. All right, all right. <laughs> Gibbs, you're doing too much yapping. Oh no, here we Gibbs, go. Gibbs, oh, in boy. your own words, tell me how everything should be best of one. Period. Well, you know, everyone has complaints about formats, right? But there's only one perfect format, and that is one five-minute game of Rocket League for a couple of reasons. One, we still get tiebreakers. They call it overtime, but I'm just going to rename it to tiebreakers. When you're tied at the end, you get to play golden goal. That is fantastic. Also, for the casters, I want to see Jorby, where he doesn't have to... A hold everything in because he's got to go through a whole series of best of Back. seven of, of like 35 minutes. No, I want to see Jorby from the get-go just screaming and yelling for five minutes and every goal is going to count. Now for the players, right now it's like, oh, first killer had a wonderful stat. He scored a thousand goals in RLCS. It's going to be a milestone now when you score 10. It's going to be fantastic because you're only going to play so much Rocket League and we will really dive deep into these stats because if you have one bad game, First touch is going to preach about it for three weeks because it won't matter at that point. Like if you put up a score of 30, oh, just wait until T-Bait sees that. So it's going to make some great content and we will clearly get the best team in the world because best of ones is the only thing that matters. Gibbs, you're going to be so upset at how much I did. I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, agree with everything you just said. That is so true. <laughs> I know you do. You're a college man. I get it. I just it. want, I I want, I want this. Let's we're go. clipping that. I'm sending that Sonics and be like, hey, this is a real moment, Gibbs. He wanted this segment on this show. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Wave Funk, it's your oh, turn. No. Okay. You have one too. You're the host. But in your yep. own words, Wave Funk, uh, org merch is overrated. So why not just tape a logo on a shirt? It does the same job. Listen, listen. If you think that a jersey is going to help you play better, you are out of your mind. If you think that the team is going to love you because you wore the colors that they're playing, they care about themselves. They care about the game. It's about the game, folks. It's about the game. (laughs) It's about the best of all. (laughs) Honestly, if we could just have it be orange versus blue, default octanes versus default octanes (laughs) for forever, everything would be more understandable. It would be a, we could get back to what really matters, the gameplay and who's best. That's all that matters in the whole world. Colors are boring and they're just distractions. That's all they are. So, yeah, absolutely. Oh, uh, how much to say? Yeah, how much did that pain you with? Because I know, because like, if you don't know Wave Funk, he cares about his merch more than <sighs> colors. I, I like colors. <laughs> colors are fun. 
Let me mm. give me some fun colors to wear. Okay, folks, that that, that was a good segment. If, if, again, if you just if you just tuned in, we were all defending segments we did not believe. So if you're if you just oh we were, uh, uh, well no I don't know yeah. I believe it now. or were <laughs> we or were we Chad or were we what's happening here, folks? Okay, well let's let's get back to talking about what's actually about the actual gameplay here again because you know forget about merch. Uh, let's let's talk about the major race here, folks. We got five spots from North America to go to San Diego. We've got a few teams. A pretty much clinched one indeed clinched Gen G cannot lose they will be going even if they had the worst winter invitational possible they will be going to San Diego all the rest of the spots are kind of up but it's really kind of the battle for the last two spots gives absolutely fourth and fifth right now tied with Dignitas and FaZe FaZe is still playing today but if they lose then they will be sitting there with that point total but it really comes down to there's a four point gap basically when you finish in top eight from each place and so you can go down all the way to uh, PK down there, like at 13 points, and they're really deep into this race because if they place one better, they could at least force a tie break uh, in those top five spots. So, really, what we're talking about is there's two spots available, and teams four through 10 have a realistic shot at it, but who makes it is the ultimate question. Well, think yes, about, I was going to say, think about what he just said four through 10. Hey, yeah, that's a lot for North America, especially. We see that in Europe sometimes, but not in North America usually. Yeah, I mean, what, what are you looking at? Maybe 25 to feel really comfortable about we might have a shot. I mean, you you realistically have to top eight the Invitational if you're one of those teams right on the edge. Well, let's let's talk. Chance. Let's talk about a team that has talked has made top eight every event so far here in the winter. Let's talk about M80 and, and, and their chances here. This is I, I is is this an outside chance at this point? How highly do we rate M80 as having a chance of making it into the top five? So I rate them very highly now because they've done it twice. Like, I feel like we always get these teams coming up and they'll do it once. Kind of like Dignitas, how they had that top right, four run, right. then they fell back down to ninth. So I don't so I don't rate them as high as that maybe just because that maybe has been consistent with two top eight. Sure, they've run into brick walls, but that that's going to be the, the, the case at some point. But M80 put on a yeah. form. Like, they played fantastic versus a Gen G squad. It was three one-goal games that got them down 3-0. Like, if they won one of those games, they might have won this whole series. So, for them, I think they are a true threat to make top five. I agree with that. I mean, if, especially if you also look at their schedule, the teams that they've beaten, even dating back to the first event, I mean, taking down, I mean, going five with energy the first time, taking down Optic, then you go round one, beat phase round one. Yeah, they ran into the wall of complexity, but complexity made finals that event. You go into sure. this uh, this event, and then, of course, this time they sweep NRG, beat them, yeah. and then they make bracket. This time they go up against Furia. Again, these yeah. are all highly rated teams. They move on to the quarterfinals. They play against Genji, the other team that made the finals, the team that just clinched the major. So, of course, you know, you can see the, the I guess, the, what's the, the wall that they have to climb over, but... Sure. It's the, it's the top two right now. Everybody else, you're, you're yeah. kind of in trouble here. This team is playing really good Rocket League. If you don't show up, they will take you down. I mean, Nolly tweeted about it yesterday after the match. They know, like, they are a very good team. Watch out for them as they move forward here. Let's, let's, let's talk about Dignitas. You mentioned them, Gibbs, uh, uh, briefly there. Obviously, did not have that same performance. What's the hope for the Dignitas fans in chat? So Dignitas, I think there is some hope because because in the uh, Winter Cup as well, they went 2-1 and one in their group, which is a great sign. But that first tournament was a little fluky. They went one and two in their group. They finished third, and then they just made a run. But the one thing that matters is an important series do you show up. They did it in a huge quarterfinal game like in that winter open. So Dignitas, they took down a very a good team. I think it was Space Station, right? I don't have it up right now, but uh, like last, Dignitas, last event, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they took down Space Station, a very good team, which is a huge win because Space Station is also in that race. So big time moments when you're playing with uh, players that have experience like we see with Andy with 21 regionals but normally not in a top eight spot he finally got his first top four so that's big for a Dignitas squad to get that experience and who knows how these groups fall you never know they can make another run well okay yeah, let, and, let, let, let's, oh, let's talk ahead. about let's talk about space station here stack yeah. because we just we just mentioned Dignitas taking down space station their last win was 2021 that's two years ago by the way if you're still in kind of quarantine brain time uh th this is but they but wait how is that possible like they, they feel so strong we talk about them all the time yeah it feels like they're always kind of hanging around near the uh near the end of events and then 
yeah, when I heard that they hadn't won in about two years, that that just blew my mind because that's they, before they picked up Daniel. Right. Yeah. Before they picked up Daniel, he, he has not won an RLCS event, which also just seems impossible to believe. But yes, we fact checked it. It's true. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like they're a team that they they may not win an RLCS event this season until Worlds, potentially. Like, that would be maybe their best shot to do so just because they've been taking so long to kind of recover from having, you know, how long was Rettles with them? And now they've got to bring in LJ to kind of replace that. And they've still got a lot of work to do, but I do think they've got a very strong leader up at the top in Chrome that there are very few people, I think, that could get them to that point by yeah. the time August rolls around. He definitely could. And Space Station, like in the fall, had three top fours, right? So yeah. they are very consistent. I'd say they're probably the favorites coming into this to make a top five run. But so far, two quarterfinal exits where they could have won either one of those matches really hurts them. All right. Now, Daz, I know I know you escaped the cult at this point, but talk to me about NRG. Like, what do they do? They have a chance? Is there any hope? <laughs> well, well, now, well, listen, listen, listen. Everybody thought that, like, I went to GG and I just think NRG are bad now. This has never been the case. Uh, do NRG have a chance? Yes, but it's about as tough as I think it's always been uh, for these three. I think they have the right ideas, but when it comes down to them on the field, sometimes it's just not clicking and you don't necessarily see them at get into that team play form that they had when they were dominant. NRG is a solid squad and they've been definitely showing people that they have that potential to make this major. I think it's very, I think you would be silly to get them out of the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think that all it takes for them is to have a click and one more regional event. They get, you know, they win their group, they get on the good side of the bracket. And next thing you know, boom, NRG in San Diego. Just, it's, I mean, it's Justin Garrett and Squishy we're talking about here. These guys have shown up and they have performed on a level basis. It's just sometimes they let these series get away from them. They haven't been hitting some of their marks in terms of shot opportunities. And that has been the biggest detriment. Hit the shooting packs, please. Hit them. <laughs> just put them to practice here. Okay. NRG, we, we, we talked about them, though. Gibbs, Furia, is, is uh, this has been oh, uh, this Furia. has been a low for them, like career-wise. Oh, uh, Furia pains me. It's all because they brought Jorby on to the team stream. <laughs> Every time he has a team <laughs> okay. stream, those teams never make a major. Sorry, Misfits. But Furia, realistically, <laughs> when they were in Sam, they were not onliners. They would squeak in, and then they would show up on land and perform exceptionally well. They would always wait to, like, Regional 3 win that one, and then they would make it. So they were always on the bubble in Sam, but we knew that they were the very best because when they get to land, they show their true... Uh, performance basically, but they're not on liners and they kind of figured this out. They brought in Lost and we're thinking, all right, the number one player in Sam, I think a lot of people would say that is left there. They bring him in. It's supposed to be an upgrade, but Lost plays a unique a unique way of Rocket League where he's a ball chase guy. He likes to just be mm. in your face at all times. And it looks like he's trying to adapt to the team. Maybe it's time for a change where Fury is like, no, Lost, you do your thing. And we'll adapt yeah. to you because so far it has not worked in two tournaments so far. They basically need a top four, probably a grand finals run to make it to the major at this point. But there's still hope because I think when you bring in Lost, that potential is sky high. They could easily win a regional with the three members on this team. Agreed. It's just you got to put it all together. There's 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 an argument for every single one of these teams here. Just very quickly down the line, starting with you, Dazzer, and pick two. Which two are going through? Oh, goodness gracious. What? Uh, of, well, of FaZe is a named. lock, I think. You know, FaZe, no, I no, think of the, we all For think. the bottom two, yeah. Yeah. For the bottom two? Yeah. Oh, for, for all the teams. Ah, that's so hard. Why? Okay, uh, never mind. Never mind. Don't, 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 don't Moving on, folks. Okay. Where's the bracket we got today, SSG. folks? SSG. There. G SSG, congratulations. You, you, you got to vote from Stacks. Gen G Mobile 1 versus Complexity. FaZe Clan versus G2. Those are the two matches we've got to get through here, folks. $30,000 on the line for the team that doesn't lose today. We got three matches to play. If you don't lose at all, you will get that 30K. If you if you only lose one time, congratulations. Well, I guess if you lose one time, you can lose in the semifinals. Anyways, team that comes second in the grand finals <laughs> going to get 20K here. And a lot of cash. We got a schedule, folks. We got three matches. Complexity versus Gen G. If you're here for that match, go get some popcorn. Get get ready because it's not on just yet. We're gonna start off the day 
with a wonderful battle. G2 Esports taking on FaZe Clan will be our first match of the day. And picking a favorite here is hard because I don't know what side of the bed FaZe woke up on. Yeah, FaZe <laughs> is angry. FaZe is absolutely angry because they finished ninth. That does not happen. They always finish top four and that's where they stay normally in NA. They're consistent, but they're angry. Number one in offense throughout this tournament, nearly 2.8 goals per game. They're only giving up 0.93 goals per game. They destroyed PK yesterday. They were very, very angry. We all know first killer. <laughs> he wants performances. He wants to win. There's a lot of pressure on this team for the other two members because whenever you team with first killer, there's always that small doubt in your head. Like, am I next? Am I going to be kicked off? But... They have performed. Mist and Sipical have performed on phase. They were top four uh, at the fall major. They want to get back there. And I think a lot of us have them pretty much a lock. They were in that fourth spot for major that they need some points. But I think we all think that they will perform when it matters most. And right here is a big moment. They're playing G2, who's right above them in points. They want to tie them going into this match. Now, G2 on the other side of things, yet to make a grand finals in the 2022 season they have always got knocked out by a grand finalist team that both of those one of those things will either either they'll make the grand finals or they get knocked out by a grand finalist team already in this spot here des yeah and you know one of the things that i think is like super interesting just not even about like uh that that grand finalist kind of conversation but also the the major conversation as well this is a clinch match for g2 you know they win this mm. not only do they clinch but also complexity clinches so this is like a much bigger deal here. And I think this thing gonna really be determined on the FaZe clan as well, because FaZe are gonna have to stop this G2 team that kind of have everything going for them. They've had a really tough series yesterday against SSG. They're definitely gonna clean things up there. They don't want they don't want anything like that anymore. Meanwhile, FaZe, they're they're looking back in an old form as well. And the, what we are gonna see on the field is really gonna be indicative of that. Let's see the team is getting ready to go. Match. Moments from getting underway here. And chat's been getting their votes in, letting us know. By the way, uh, First Killer's birthday, if Liquipedia is to believe, was December 18th. So it's not his <laughs> birthday chat. We have no idea. But that's a high balloon quality that balloon if that it's still a, going. So. That's very, it's clearly a very new balloon, too. That's not been around since his birthday. So <laughs> maybe he's prematurely celebrating. He got it for your birthday, exactly. He, he had he his own little party down, for Daz. Yeah. Yeah. He, he has the Dazarin shrine <laughs> in his living room. Oh, God. I hope not. G2 versus FaZe Clan. <laughs> Here's the stats breakdown, folks. And uh, remember, keep letting us know who you think is going to win. Let's go through the predictions. Daz, we'll start with you. Who do you think's got this? I'm I'm going G2 here. Uh, no no disrespect to FaZe Clan. I feel like, you know, what I saw from G2 in the SSG series, they really had, you know, that, that team play performance. It was a little rough with the shooting. I think they understand that. And... I also think that this is going to be something that this team continues to build on. I got they. I feel like they they're clinching major here. I got it. Stacks. I think it's a coin flip, but I, I think on this day, with the preparation that G two has put into this event and the sense of urgency that they're playing with, they understand they need to have a strong, strong performance. They need to have the best event they've played all season. I think it's G2 here. I don't think Chicago misses about a half dozen open net uh -oh. like he did yesterday. Oh, no. Gives. gives Wait, fun. Please. No. There's good news. My phase jersey did come in. Here we go. Here we go. Got it right. That's, that's nice. Tape right there. Beautiful. My phase jersey <laughs> came in, guys. Wait a minute. I am all about phase right now. Phase clan, they look so strong throughout this tournament. They haven't been tested, so maybe that'll hurt them, but I don't think it'll matter. I'm going phase. I was so worried. Just taped a logo to a shirt. I was so crazy. worried because the Gibbs and I both predicted that G2 would win the whole thing. We so did. I thought I was like, Gibbs is about to predict G2, and then I'm gonna curse them here. So I can just predict G2 to take this one down, folks. Phase is gonna have their hands full with G2, absolutely. But it's more of a coin flip than we would like to admit up here on the desk. Chat's got it on lock though. 57% for G2, 43 for phase there. It's gonna be a battle. First match of the day. Gonna be a banger. Hope you're ready for it, folks. We got phase. We got G2 winner through to the grand finals, major implications all over the place. Let's get down to the skybox. The Chiefs and Crowley are ready for the game.
Well, Corelli, we have made it at long last. Phase vs. G2, another classic in the North American uh, ecosystem, I suppose, is the word I want. This one <laughs> shapes up to be a good one every time. All, all things uh, come back to even here. Phase sitting in a top four situation. I said yesterday that's kind of their ceiling and their floor. We'll see if they can break into a grand final today. Remember, the stakes here, G2 beating Phase would clinch the major for both G2 and Complexity. So a lot to consider here. Obviously, Mist has been playing well defensively all weekend long. Caused a lot of fits for a few teams on Friday and, of course, yesterday. And, of course, G2, we already know that offense, once it gets going, it can be pretty tough to stop. So a lot of good questions about what we're going to get today and who's going to step up. Move on into the grand finals as pumped over Mist's shoulder, and he will control this one on the backboard and take that G2 opportunity away. But it's a hard press here. And Chicago Atomic and Jane Abs trying to capitalize off that demo. Unfortunately, no gaps anywhere. And I think it's a fair question to pose as Atomic Whoa. will not make the save off his goal line missed. Will strike first for FaZe. Not for sure Atomic was going to get a handle on this one. He came back, had 100 boost, started heading up the wall, and that's actually why. I mean, it's, it's not a bad move to go up the wall there. It's just exactly where that ball was placed. He already had an angle set, didn't have the time, was going too fast to adjust. And so G2 concede the first one. Uh, what I was going to say was it's a fair question to pose for about G2, because I don't know if they were all that convincing on the back half of that Space Station series. It was smooth sailing, or at least what it felt like. And then G2, uh, I think, really started to lose a lot of their control against Space Station. What a pass Ooh. from Atomic and the shot from Chicago's perfect top shelf. Really puts them in the blender as well. I mean, Atomic, that's a great dish, and Chicago, way to let it roll. You know you've got the time. Mist is an excellent defender, but one-on-one, -on -one, uncontested shot, having to defend the whole net, take your best guess and hope Chicago delivers big time, gets them back even. But you're not wrong, Corelli. Yesterday against Space Station, G2 starting to falter a little bit. Does not seem to be the case, at least at the start here against FaZe. Definitely no trouble getting the offense moving. And, you know, when I say that, some people might look at the scoreline and say, well, they traded blows back and forth, but it was really the context of that game. G2's game plan, I think, really started to deteriorate against Space Station. That's credit to Space Station. I think they did a great job of adapting uh, in that series. FaZe certainly have been pretty one-dimensional with their attack, and it always works because of this guy right here, first killer sniping the top right corner. Sacrifices his body for it, says, I need to beat the defense, and how about wow. putting a dime in the top right corner yes, right that. before a huge Good shot. Good luck, defense. Have fun with that one. There's just no way you're getting up for that one in time. Absolute juice from first killer and a lot of back and forth early on. It's not like it's really extended stays. It's kind of just to chuck it into the middle and see if you're fast enough to get there. The only goal for G2 coming off a strong transition play where they just want a big challenge. So I guess in that sense, FaZe, the ones moving the ball a little bit better early. They do catch G2 leaning left side, but the pass a little too far over first killer's head. They get a couple of good boost deals, though. Should hamper G2's transition here a little bit. Good physical play on first killer to prevent the touch. Now he's coming up big defensively twice now. Two saves from first killer back to back. Turns away G2, Atomic. He's got no boost here. Looking for someone to bite. Jane has free jump. And the defense does well to read it. But a lot of space. You can see how much time G2 had on the ball there with no boost. Atomic was just sitting there waiting for a phase defender to go for him. And that's what allowed them to set the pass. Take a little page out of that Jin G book. You, you get that ball on the nose or on an air dribble, and the defense generally just locks up because they got to respect the hard shot to the net with a flick or something. And JNAB's trying to get up there early, pre jump, try and beat the defense. Now, that's a great play. I like that idea a lot. Uh oh. Jump to first killer, trying to stretch, and he will convert the transition 3 1 phase. Yeah, made it look pretty there. And G2, that was a big dive from Atomic, and he was nowhere close to getting the challenge, leaves Chicago in a tough position against first killer 1v1 with a, a setup touch where exactly he wants to put it and a double tap to put it home. First killer leading the charge here for FaZe Clan early. Only open in the midfield as well. Fist missed through one and pinched down across. No one's gonna be quite there for FaZe and we'll have to give a little bit of ground here. Delaying touch from first killer and G2. They definitely have a lot of time, but I'd like to see him get started a little bit more with the offense. Faze starting to pull away more and more, at least in the terms of quality opportunities on net. G2 with seven shots, only one on the board, and 
Only four saves required from FaZe, so... G2 doing a nice job transitioning, but tr struggling to set up quality chances. And you're seeing exactly what you would expect from this series. You're seeing some great offensive plays from FaZe, solo plays from first killer, sniping shots, but you're also seeing a lot of control from G2, passing, looking for options, mm -hmm. looking for space, and taking advantage of that space when it's given to them. So you're getting exactly what you want. Here's FaZe and Mist trying to get a double tap. They're looking to set up their offense. Comes oh, hello. Let's go. Can he put on target? Atomic can't make the save. And it's 4-1 FaZe Clan. Man, Typical's just in a great spot for this one. He's on that open side of the field, all the way on the bottom, just covering that side, just in case they throw the ball to Jane Apson. Just sees that pinch challenge, goes straight across the middle, and he's just in a great spot to go and collect on it. I mean, it's not like, uh, that's really just right place, right time, and you put yourself in good position, good things happen. And unfortunately, a weak challenge from Chicago there. He didn't have boost, so that was the best he could do. And of course, pitching out to the midfield is never what you want especially with a guy like Typical behind the ball. G2, less than a minute to play. And I really don't think it's been a horrible game from them, but the yeah, scoreline no. would tell you otherwise. It absolutely looks a lot worse than it's been. It's just been a couple of really nice plays from FaZe to get them through and can't fault the execution. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap. And that might be what G2 has to do here in game one. Now that's just a missed touch from Chicago. Atomic will cover up on the backboard, but if you're G2, you'd like to spend the last 20 seconds or so on offense and say, okay, hang on, we, we just have to make sure that we can actually win some of these challenges against these guys. And right now, that's just not happening. And don't get me wrong, there's been mistakes from G2. Poor challenges uh, on that second goal from Atomic, nowhere close to it, left Chicago in a 1v1 against first killer. That's no team in the world wants that. And those type of mistakes have come back to bite G2, but I think you made a great point of Chiefs phase. Uh, this is probably one of the better games of execution we've seen from them. Yeah. Game one, in full control for FaZe Clan. Really great showing. Can't really fault hardly anything from it. I mean, the only goal they allow is a, is a quick transition where Mist is in a one-on-one in -on -one or essentially was a one-on-two. But if that's the only one you're giving up and, and you're hitting some of these shots like what First Killer hit, yeah. of course, what <laughs> Mist and Typical were dishing out, I think you'll take that pretty much every time. In general, well played overall. and. Your G2, you say, okay, it's it's not too much of a, of a fix. We just got to make sure we get yeah. more of our car on the ball when we're going and fighting for possession. Absolutely. I don't think it's a, a huge change for G2, but for FaZe, <laughs> if I'm in this intermission right now for FaZe, I'm saying, boys, keep playing like this. This is the expectation when you put a first killer, a typical, and a mist on the field, and every single player played their role perfectly. I don't think there was hardly any double commits. They didn't look panicked on defense, which is yep. the two biggest criticisms that we've had of this phase squad over the last year. Um, and when you go up against a highly organized team like G2, they have the opportunity to break you down. I don't think FaZe allowed them to. They gave G2 some space and some time, but FaZe did a great job of staying behind the ball and not allowing G2 to kind of get their rhythm going. Yep, they definitely weren't sitting there on their own half, giving a lot of time and space if G2 ever got the ball over there. They were definitely out there ready to go. So it's it's more of, you know what, fine, you want to get that ball through the midfield, go for it, be my guest. His first killer finds a bump and Mist just really trying to force something that isn't there. Challenging from way too far away, but there's that support from Sipical and now we'll really get to test that G2 offense as they try and start to get physical on that goal line. Unfortunately, just nothing connecting and quickly thrown back onto the blue half oh, and my. that is a team bump. Mist says, ah, tough. Is it really? I was on Miss POV. I couldn't see exactly what happened to each other on the wall. Oh, he did. Chicago T-Bones Atomic. And that's what allowed that one to go in. It was kind of awkward to see as Miss Shot wasn't hit with pace. Yeah, that was, <laughs> all things considered, a bit of a wet noodle of a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and again. I, I mean, that's, that's another, you know, minor mistake. One that you wouldn't expect them to make. One that I don't think anyone would you know, bet on in many of these series. G2 certainly organized in a lot of these defensive holds. In the first minute, a big mistake comes out. Phase once again, executing and putting away the first goal. So G2, at, at least in general, apart from conceding, I, I think what everyone would, is willing to classify as a fluke off the rip here, they do seem to be doing a much better job at least fighting for the ball at the midfield line. They're not really getting pushed back into their own half too much, at least so far. We shall see if this first stint here for FaZe changes my opinion or not. 
not appear so. Quickly out of their own half. JNAPS towards the middle. Chicago misses a few demos, does get the boost deal, so you gotta work hard here if you're phased to keep things under control. And that's the right idea. Clear the ball high, get it at least past the midfield line, force G2 to spread themselves out. You see G2, they want to bring that ball down the midfield. They're looking for options, but the challenge game, very strong for phase at the moment. Another one stalled in the midfield. This will throw downfield. Opportunity for Chicago. Can he oh, get it on beautiful. angle? And he does. Perfectly done from Chicago in a tie game. They catch FaZe leaning here. First killer is a little too far forward. And he realizes that, oh, there's no way I make it back in time. So I'm just going to have to try and get up and steal this one from Jane Apps. But no shot. Not one foot too far. And just dumped it off to Chicago. Great redirect, honestly. I mean, when you get a redirect like that thrown at you and you're so deep in the corner, can be quite difficult on uh, every now and again to actually get that one in between the sticks, but doesn't overthink it, just goes far post to give himself the most time to get around it, and drills a great one. To be honest, Chiefs, I trust uh, Chicago with that shot 100% of the time. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just me. <laughs> G2, certainly trusting him there. Another one lobbed towards net. Easy save here for first killer, Faze. Looking to go on the transition, looking to catch out G2 on the counterattack, but it's just not quick enough. They're not holding on to the ball. And now okay. G2 trying to get a hold of it on their side. Cyclical, not allowing them. Here's JNAPS looking for Atomic far side. Atomic trying to stretch out to get there. Still face. An attack here for Cyclical is denied by Chicago. And I do like that uh, G2 on some of these challenges, I think they know they're not actually going to get there, but they know the right play is to put the pressure on them. Yeah. Instead of just back off. Just allow that counterattack to begin. The only problem is there is some of those challenges. While it's a good idea to pressure, they're not exactly forcing them to tip the ball into a place they don't want. So if that pace gets picked up at least a little bit from G2, you may start to see FaZe lose a little bit oh. of control on some of these transitions. Nobody comes up with a touch as Jane Haps in first killer. Fight for possession of the midfield line. Mist really trying to stretch a push here in Atomic. Again, way late. Faze really just moving the ball left and right, up and down the pitch to see if anything is going to break down for G2. There's a lot of misdirection on Faze right now. A lot of fake touches, fake challenges coming out from first killer, inviting G2 into, into the ball, into possession, or to attack the net. It's typical. One of the pre-jump first killer never gave it to him. He was waiting for G2 to bite. Now G2 quickly on the counter. JNAP up quickly and Ooh. doesn't put power behind it. Chicago, can he bail him out off the crossbar? Still tied and Faze able to break away. I think that was it. Chicago definitely had a shot there into the right side of the net. Unfortunately, pings it off the post. Probably should have been a goal. But another one oh. dumped to him, and this time puts the defense on skates. Everyone thinks he's going to chip it high in the net, and he just keeps it stuck to the floor. I mean, to be fair, most players are looking to crush this one, and Chicago oh. lets it go, <laughs> gets the two defenders to fight on the power shot, and instead watches it roll by. Chicago using his brain there. And G2 in the lead. Great bit of shooting from G2 as we do have a pause request. Not entirely sure what the issue is either way. G2 up one. I I, I have to imagine that goal's not going to get taken off the board. I no, I it was see G2. why it would. G2 asked for it. Looks like Tom oh, okay. had an issue. We'll find out what that is. But uh, yeah, it looks like G2's calling for it. So I'm sure that goal will stay. And for G2, uh, you could be happy here. I think in this game, uh, they don't get as much control as I think they'd like, but mm -hmm. it's working, right? I don't think that execution or just the, the the chances are there for FaZe at the moment. I mean, they have one shot. Mist has a single shot and a goal. The one goal he scored. a lot scored. of good movement on the ball, if you're sure. Fierce, but you're right. That, that effectiveness is definitely tapered off uh, from before, of course, you know, because I, I didn't necessarily feel like G2 or... Yeah, they're pressuring the ball, but I didn't feel like they were forcing FaZe to move the ball in a way that they didn't really want to. It felt like that was the only real play for FaZe. But at the same time, it, it is pushing that ball out towards the sidewall, out towards FaZe, where they really can't track it down a second time. So I guess all things considered, it's working out. You're keeping FaZe that really kind of just pushed you around a little bit earlier on, and, and you've limited them to one shot. So it, it is definitely a marked improvement. Yeah.
It, well, and I think that's kind of what I'm trying to say here is I think for FaZe, it just feels like despite maybe some of the movement that we're complementing, they're not putting the attack on the net, right? It's great to keep possession. It's great to go into the other side's corner. But if you're not attacking the net, you're not jittering the shots and you find yourselves down one goal with 47 seconds left. So for FaZe, you, you got to get a little bit more uh, dangerous on your attacks here. And for G2, despite maybe not wanting to play that control style to a T here, it's been a little more messy in the midfield, a lot more... Uh, a bit more of a contest in the midfield here from FaZe. I don't know. I don't think they're upset with the way they've been playing this game. It's this mm -hmm. is the type of game they're going to have to play with the way, uh, the, with the play style that FaZe is bringing. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I think they knew that uh, they, I don't think they come in here expecting that, you know, they're going to 4-1 every single series. And, and even that 4-1 we were talking about was, was fairly tight. Uh, all things considered, it was just a couple of really nice plays from FaZe. I think they knew that they were going to play some tight games and that's just because G2 in general has an excellent spread of the field, and they're overall, all things considered, a, a pretty difficult team to break down and get through. I mean, they have that aggressive layer of Chicago. JNAPS can rotate through on that back line. He's a staunch defender. Of course, past that, who knows where Atomic is? He, he can surprise you from just about anywhere. I mean, he'll cut into rotation. He'll absolutely throw you for a loop and take one up onto an air dribble. And they, FaZe knows that G2 can cover a lot of different things, so... It's, they know it's going to take hard work if they want to break them down. And game two, they may have just got bricked out a little bit here. Every time we go to first pillars camp, man, he's stretching out. He's yawning. He's cleaning his glasses. Camera guy's doing him dirty here today. Jeez, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> My man's just trying to work. And boy, has he been working. Game one was stellar from first killer. I mean... When, it, when when a guy is so good like First Killer, it's tough to really talk him up because he gets talked up all the time. But that game one was an impressive was impressive work from First Killer. That might be par maybe in some people's mind with the way First Killer plays, but some good work behind the ball and some great shooting allows FaZe to build those types of leads. That's where FaZe win, right? And we talked about them having top four being the floor and the ceiling. They don't like that. They feel like they should be winning more. That's why they're making changes when they're finishing top four at majors. And they're sitting top four here in this regional, uh, trying to qualify for a major. It wouldn't happen yet. But for FaZe, uh, this is this team was built to be in top fours and to succeed even further. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, FaZe has certainly all the pieces of where they can be one of the most successful teams in North America. I think you're bang on the money. It's, it's tough to talk up a guy like First Killer because, you know, like you say, when, when your bar is you're in contention to be the best player in NA pretty much all the time, you know, how much more can you really give him <laughs> when, when he's just that good of a, a player on the pitch? So at the same time, you, you look over on that G2 side and it's like, you know, there was a, a time in North American RLCS where, where JNAPS definitely had sort of that moniker of definitely can be the best player in North America at any given moment. And I don't know if anyone's quite got that same star power as, as First Killer anymore on that G2 side. All capable players, you know, and, th and that's the real question is, is the floor a little bit higher for G2 or is it with FaZe? And that's kind of why this is such a, a tightly contested uh, matchup that we were talking about all season. And uh, just uh, so we know, it looks like we are going to be starting at 49 seconds at the kickoff. Atomic lost connection, and he is back into the lobby. So we will resume from a kickoff position. It is still 2-1 in favor of G2. The goal will stand. Of course, G2 was the one to call the timeout. It was Atomic who disconnected. And it looks like we'll get right back into it, Achieves. Excellent. It's all things considered, they just go right on after Chicago's goal and phase. We'll see what they can cook up here in the last 50 seconds, and it's already something dangerous. Tipped off the ceiling, uh -oh. and that one's off the post. Typical. Can't jam it home. What? Mist just can't quite get it in between the old iron sides, and FaZe going to be kicking themselves. I mean, you thought that was absolutely it. Another quick dish into the center. Atomic reads it. He's one-on-one -on -one where typical and Mist is just trying to delay this G2 counterattack. Shots raining towards the net. Atomic will put this one away. It was oh so wow. close. And then just like that, it's out of reach. That was chaotic on the G2 defensive side. And then when we started complimenting FaZe from not double committing, they do it there and it comes back to bite them. Atomic puts away a third for G2. Man, that's tough. I mean, that had a great draw up there. That that touch off what the a whirlwind was, was a brilliant <laughs> idea from first killer. I mean, that type of pass, that's going to be four. And now... <laughs> 
Now you get the exact inverse of the game yeah. one. It's it's a it's a four one that does not belie how tight this game was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you gonna do? Uh, what are you gonna do? I think for FaZe, uh, disappointing start to the end of that timeout, and then of course, when it rains it pours. I suppose for G two. Four one, as you said, the inverse of game one. FaZe beat G two four one in the previous game, and that might be where the scoreline ends up. A little payback from G2. We got ourselves a series. Yeah, definitely looking forward. Oh. Are we gonna? Are we gonna? Okay. <laughs> we did. Like we were really gonna try and press this one, but no. They finally decided to continue on G2, close out game two in. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily stunning fashion, but uh, it may be more accurate to say relieved, because <laughs> I think this one very easily could have ended up in overtime. I'll take that. You get a little lucky sometimes the shot doesn't come through for him. That's the hard part. You can draw up the greatest setup in the world, but you still got to put the ball in between the posts and probably see it here in a few seconds. It's just going to scream off that right post from Mist. But first, you got to see how G2 broke everybody down. There's that beautiful redirect from Chicago. Ooh, down and go ahead, goal. Oh, we don't get to see it. They just give us the 3-1. All right, I understand. They want to do Mr. Solid and say, nah, we don't have to see it again. <laughs> that was great defense there from G2, though. Uh, you got to hand it to him. It was a little panicked, but that's what you have to do when you're in a situation like that, and they get the job done. So defense holding strong, looking good at the end of that game for G2. On we go to game number three. A tie series score. Someone's got to break the deadlock. Who's going to step up? First killer in game one, JNAP's great stop to start off game three. Another hard shot from this. Chicago getting aggressive as well. G2, I think, just trying to spread the field a little bit so they can collect themselves, but they're losing a lot of the boost game, at least initially here in game three. Don't really know if they've quite got the people in position to hold off a potential face push. Jump down, another strong float from JNAP's just to clear the field a little bit, and that's going to help them a lot in terms of getting their feet set. And that little air dribble there from First Killer might have been the most space we've seen uh, since game one for him, and it really didn't add up to anything. He's trying to set himself Ooh. up there again, but Atomic, that challenge game for G2. I talked about how good it was for FaZe in game one. It has flipped back to the other side. First Killer shot a target, missed there. Wow. To follow up, again, the defense of G2, rock solid. I mean, that's a great read from JNAPS. They, I, if that bowl's on target, they get beat to the net, right? Because JNAPS absolutely has to play that one off the bounce off the wall because they were too far forward. But at the same time, G2 willing to take a little bit of a risk, play slightly more aggressive to kind of match that phase pace. Say, if you want to beat us, you're going to have to do it with absolute perfect shooting. He's getting aggressive here. Great presence on this blue side can they try and bind up all that wow. g2 defense into something and the physicality comes through to knock off the support and then it's a nice free easy clear he, uh, first killer almost got that one across unfortunately that touch came down on top of a g2 player here he comes again unfortunately nothing on target and you were mentioning it's great presence great control but nothing's attacking the net now miss has a flip reset right. it's gonna just barely get to the net as jnaps has an easy touch to clear it away, he's called upon again, and another challenge won for JNAPS. G2, get out. JNAPS wants to go all the way. He gets up over Mist, and First Killer calmly takes this one out from his box. Yeah, that's the right idea from Mist. You force the guy high on the air dribble, and then you continue through that path. You generally will end up getting a bump on the player, makes it very easy for the person behind you to make the play on the ball. He's executing how to challenge an air dribble 101. Take notes, everybody and winning crucial challenges back to back. Now, first killer over to Sifical, and JNAPS ran interference in front of Sifical. And now JNAPS comes again off the ceiling, never got back up. And a very tightly contested game three here. Nobody really having the edge, in my opinion. It feels like both sides testing the waters, but not willing to commit, commit too hard. And nobody really having a clear setup. Another shot on target but easily denied. JNAPS, this guy's been everywhere. He's got three yeah. saves. He is moving right now as first killer. Starting to get involved a little bit more right on that goal line. See if he can break down a few defenders. Double commit here from FaZe, and that means he doesn't really have a whole lot of support. Chicago will push him off the ball as well. 
of physicality. And good so far for G2 has yet to pay any dividends. This one's going to be an easy read for Atomic. I, I should. <laughs> it's easy for Atomic. The read itself is not. And Chicago chop wow. going down on the midfield. Atomic just a step behind the play. G2 finally starting to get some counterattacks here after that phase push. Like you were saying, there wasn't a whole lot on the net for phase. It was just towards it. And G2 looking stiff on defense. No one really can get them out of the way. I don't think FaZe have gotten a lot of clean touches for setup, or if they did, again, it's not towards net. You're seeing First Killer take air dribbles straight into the corner, trying to get double taps in the corner. It's just too easy for, for G2 to read, or they're just not disturbed by it. Here's First Killer again. He's got typical waiting. First gets through oh, now. Atomic quickly. G2, transition is so quick, and Miss knew not to push up too far. Yeah, that's, that's just great understanding. You understand that that challenge is coming with pace. Huge demo from Mist onto Atomic. JNAPS was looking for him in the midfield. He's going to stop what could have been a dangerous G2 shot, especially late in the game. Overtime looming. Another dimp towards JNAPS. Atomic trying to get physical on the goal line and typical. Just tracking that one all the way across the pitch to make the stop. You have to say G2 has the edge here. Phase only three shots. G2 on eight. Oh my. And if the score line is 0 0, first killer oh trying to goodness. do it himself. It's going to ping pong <laughs> around, and Atomic will recover and figure it out. Clear the ball, but FaZe isn't quite done yet. Typical's getting bumped what around by JNAPS. First killer can't drop the hammer on him. Chicago will close the gap. FaZe somehow kept out of the blue net. I can't believe first killer turned that into a dangerous shot. He picked up the full boost, went up over the ceiling, a back behind the ball, back flipped it into the back wall, and then land on it. I mean, seriously, who comes up with that? <laughs> it's an improviser's world, Thrilly. <laughs> we just live in it. <laughs> First killer off the ceiling. Here's Mist again, just trying to beat that G2 defense, but too much space. Typical having to come from too far away. First killer has recovered after grabbing some boost in midfield. He will just try and open up more space with some physicality. Miss should have an uncontested touch here. As I say that, of course, Atomic oh. takes a big bite out of him and FaZe is really going to throw off the timing, but they still beat Chicago. Zipical just has to get around Atomic, but he's so consistent off that backboard. Excellent read to clear the space. And Miss knew, once again, he dropped deep for FaZe. Did watch the counter from G2 because it's so quick. G2 do so well with one man back because the two men in front of him they sit on the sidewalls and wait for clears, and it turns around so quickly. Oh, Another boy. double commit there from FaZe. This time, it it doesn't hurt them. That should that have been easily right. communicated, and now everyone pushed for G2. First killer trying to turn this one around quickly. Typical shot on target, but an easy save. His fourth for JNAPS. He's got four saves and four shots in this game, JNAPS does. Been insane. Six saves for Mist alone on the face side and a crushing challenge from Mist. Whoa. And a missed touch from Atomic won't go through <laughs> for FaZe quite yet. Been a couple missed touches from G2, but it hasn't cost them. Well, that's a tough one for Simpical over his head, but he does get right in front of Chicago. Shuts down all the shooting lanes. First killer, hard cut down the middle. Atomic, easy enough save. Just a little floater into the midfield. Unfortunately, it will cost them their corner boosts here. Seem to have worried G2 overly much. Chicago stalls one out for JNAPS. And again, great reads from FaZe. Frisco and Simpical combining. Make sure to get that ball all the way to safety. Simpical can't quite connect on the flip reset. Mist was lurking. Once more, that G2 defense. Just Got looking two. at him, and, and that's the right idea. The only way you're getting through him, or so it would seem, is to hit him as again another two uh -oh. from, from FaZe this time. And missed it first killer. Have to figure out who has to come and save that one, but phase it's it's one inch from out of control, and every now and again, it's uh, looking like disaster territory. It feels like they're not communicating when there's two guys back defensively. They keep going for the same ball or both not committing. Like we said, hasn't come back to bite them quite yet, but that's been a mistake. Now the flip reset over a typical shot was denied by JNAPS. Another threatening look from phase but ultimately fizzles out. Missed once two off the back wall, does get it. And again, G2 breaking it up. And JNAP's timing as he's rotating back through the defensive line. Puts himself in great spots. He's getting up in someone's face. First killer almost cut that one down. Here's the transition for G2. Zipical's up so early, though, and it's actually going to work out quite well. 
Just really took a guess there and totally stalled what I thought was going to be a fairly dangerous counterattack from G2. They had FaZe rotating back. Not really set on defense, and somehow they were able to buy enough time to really get themselves in position. Jumped off the sidewall, now the ceiling for Atomic. First killer again, oh cuts that one down. They had Chicago, but the shot wide. Zipical just goes to try and stall the oh ball out. Chicago wins it again. Dumped forward, first killer one-on-one. -on -one. Chicago cannot quite execute. You get the high flick over first killer. Great defensive save from him. Whew. And that's scary about G2. They will flip you around and quickly go back the other way. If you allow them, and Chicago has sliced and diced it through phase. The game's going to slow back down here into the midfield and Almost four minutes of overtime, and it feels like no one's closer. Maybe Chicago can make the difference. It'll be denied by miss. Long clear from Fates. Oh, that's a big missed touch. Hard cross, and Atomic just covers as many options as possible and is able to stalemate the ball out to the midfield line for his teammates with a clear. Atomic seeing if he can find some demos on the back line, and first killer, red idea there, just dump the ball upfield. You never want to let Atomic be rotating around behind your team. Strike like lightning from anywhere is missed up aggressively off the ceiling to try and free Chicago on the backboard, but yeah. he's got an unintentional second touch and may have thrown off the line from whoever was playing support for him. Yeah, it was a great idea from Miss. Not executed well, but he saw Chicago on the backboard, didn't want to commit to it, just give up the ball. He tried to get that one to come back down into him. Now a demo comes out for JNAPS, but it's poke free from first killer. Here Hello. comes Chicago. Can he put it down? And it's not on target. Still G2. Looking to threaten here. Despite no one scoring, there's been a ton of shots, and a lot of them have been saved by both sides. There's 12 saves for FaZe to 12 shots, and here comes another oh. one across the box. The one time it actually gets through in a perfectly scorable spot. Nobody there for FaZe. Having to spend some time to go and collect boost on the other side, you never really expect the transition to just come through for free like that. Overtime getting extremely long here. Over five minutes. Oh, the bump. Okay, hello. I should have known this was going to make it back. He's been rotating deep back all game. You've been <laughs> talking about it. Yeah, he's been sitting real deep. And now he's actually pushed forward getting demos on JNAPS. But he's been a savior for FaZe multiple times now. Stopped the counter. Won some big 1v1s defensively. Here's JNAPS. This Woo. one almost throwing off the defense of FaZe. And now it's typical. Nobody there to receive the pass. First there was the last man. He didn't want to commit. Now G2 quickly trying to attack again. J naps from the side while Chicago to follow up. And Miss will poke it away for FaZe. Well, oh, nice challenges in a row for FaZe. I mean, everybody on the pitch reading the game incredibly well so far. Chicago and Sipical eyeing each other in the corner. This one rolls through. Sipical's just going to put it right side. And FaZe will come away with a game three win. Took him six minutes and 12 seconds. But finally, G2 blinked first. And Miss just poking it through the defense here and got a great bounce towards the center of the net. A tap in in the end for Sipical and FaZe Clan. Finally, break the deadlock here and take a series lead. Woo. I didn't know who was going to win that game. <laughs> That Can we have, have a timeout? Anything. Can we call a timeout? My yeah, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Uh, 14, 16 shots for G2 and yeah, 14 for FaZe. So a lot of back and forth, but obviously uh, give a lot of credit to Miss there. That's eight saves. Yeah. JNAP's doing his best on the other side. Five saves and definitely the, the save game a little more spread out evenly for G2, but back line missed. It's not often you get to see the guy with one assist and five shots. Uh, be on the top of the scoreboard, but you start racking up those epic saves, 75 points each. <laughs> I know. I'm surprised he didn't break a thousand points. Got to got to 905, but my goodness, defensively, phase wasn't pretty. Let's be honest, wasn't pretty, but they got the job done, and that's all that matters here. Phase was, or excuse me, missed was a huge part of that for phase on the other side for G2. Again, don't think this was a bad game that they lost. I think they were playing quite well. I thought defensively, G2 looks much stronger. Just a little. Uh, a little more put together. Mishap in the corner there. Kind of got poked free. And between two defenders, what can you do? Yeah. Generally, I mean, I think I'm with you there. I think G2 overall had a, a lot better looks on defense. Felt a lot more coordinated. Because, again, those weird double commits from FaZe obviously didn't come back to bite him in that game. But who knows? That is definitely something you, that you can't really afford to happen. Because, you know, all it takes is 
one kind of miscue like that in a game seven and then boom you're out of the tournament right there so i guess it's better to have it happen early so you can talk about it and understand how you need to fix it and later but something to keep your eye on it's phase rotations on defense and if they're communicating with each other so far, G2 could be happier with their performance than their last top four performance against Gen G. Certainly a different opponent as two go there from phase, and it still somehow works out for him. Now, Sipical has a free ball at the top of the box, and he drops it down. <laughs> Jay Naps once again. My goodness, that kid is a brick wall here today against phase. Ooh. G2 doing the smart thing, letting that ball just roll across. Just kidding. Wow. Terrible idea. Atomic doesn't realize Mist is camped out on the other side. And G2 concedes first. And what a pre-flip from Mist just to get this one on target. He wills himself towards it. And Atomic, like you said, I don't think he ever saw him or knew he was going to be there that quickly. He might have had a mental note of where Mist was sitting, but didn't expect the pre-flip. And Faith out to Elite. Atomic is no slouch of a defender either. No. To no. be sure. Like, if, if he thinks you're going to be there, if you think he wouldn't jump to try and block that, you're, <laughs> you're dead wrong. Just a great play from Mist. Go up there and make a big play to get yourselves on the board first. Now, what do you do with your phase? I mean, is, is that the earliest lead that they've had so far? I'm not sure, but... Well, I mean, you definitely want another one. I yeah, feel like... certainly against GT. Oh, you might get it there, Mist. Big press, but... I don't know. I mean, of course, you know, of course, the philosophy is you want to score goals, obviously. But I think the assumption here is that G2 is probably going to break through at one point. They, they've been really great on offense. It's going to take more than one. Almost never enough against a team like G2. That's for sure, but wouldn't be surprised to see them at least be. You do have a little bit of leeway to say, OK, oh, let's make sure we iron out those defensive uh, miscues we've been having at the very least. But you're right. G2 starting to pre-jump to get up there <laughs> early and beat the defense, and it will pay off here. They tie it up. They are quick with these passes, and Chicago oh, knew that no one else was getting the touch, and that extra touchdown to Atomic seals the deal for G2. And they get one back. The response comes quickly. Sipical already having to make one diving save across the net. Having to go try and make a second one. That's the old advantage of position as First Killer will make the stop. And looking for a gap on that backboard. Sipical again positioned quite well. It wasn't so long ago that, that Sipical was the third man for, for Space Station Gaming and you're touting his defensive prowess. There's a surprising amount of people who are incredibly good defenders on this field. Yeah, and a big, maybe even a bigger role on that Space Station squad was the shooter for Space Station oh so long ago. Just closing out the plays when they're set up. And in essence, there's some similarities here for FaZe. But when you have a guy like First Killer and his execution, he's going to put away a lot of the opportunity. Here's typical lobbing this one towards the net, him. and he just beats him over the top. Not often you see Atomic overstep. And he definitely, I think he definitely thought Chicago was going to get another touch on that. Otherwise, there's no way he's cutting forward, and he just got that ball taken off clean from Chicago's nose, and Atomic says, my bad, my bad. This read. That's what that's what happens when we say how great of a defender he is. He'll get beat over the top. I don't know. <laughs> we cursed him. The caster curse. <laughs> One way or the other, G2 going to have to find another answer here. Two minutes left, plenty of time to do it. And they've definitely had the press in general for the past, I don't know, minute or so. It definitely feels like they've been the ones in the driver's seat, at least camped out over on the orange side, if not necessarily generating a lot of chances. So, trying to get physical there on the phase goal line. It's just poking and prodding at that defense from phase and see if, who knows, maybe they double commit again and allow an equalizer. Yeah, base just kind of lobbing it towards G2. If a solo play comes out of it, great. They can regain possession in the corner of G2 even better. Try and win a couple challenges. G2 are doing well to have a guy downfield on the outlet. Here's Jane Epps. Can he dunk it? They've oh. always got an option wow. <laughs> on the clear as typical makes a tough save look easy. 
if you cut this right, now you just throw it into the space and see what you can find. Fortunately, not too much. Now it's JNAPS was every last game. This game, a typical miss now getting involved. Chicago, he's got some places to pick from. He said, how about Atomic Hood? All of FaZe were out of this play. The net was wide open, and Chicago comes in so oh. slow that he knows he's not going to get the power, and he drops it on Atomic's head and says, hey, flick this one on for me. And G2 find an equalizer. <laughs> you're typical right there. You're just like, oh, come on. That's not fair. Because <laughs> you're right, because you can see Chicago coming at that so slow. So he has to hit the brakes. And another shot coming off that phase defensive line. A pinch up to the G2 side. He's trying to go right back into the offensive press here. Close it out in regulation. Hard touch into the middle. Nobody there for phase. Fair enough. Want to make sure that they're not caught out either. JNAPS, great positioning. They got a little physical with first killer on the goal line, so it may be G2 who gets the last word. Picked the cross off the ceiling. Oh. Atomic overdoes it. It's straight down the middle. JNAPS wow. is just in the nick of time. Another pinch out in front. Last ditch effort. Chicago's got a hand up. First killer is going to go for oh the my goodness. Go. No it's way. Go. What? First killer, what a touch. Typical. We'll collect. Oh, he's so good. Look at this touch from first killer and sip oh. thought all the way. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, you don't get one of those every day. That, that's the one where you, when we have those freestyle competitions and all the freestyles trying to hit that touch straight on target. <laughs> first killer says, nah, just go across the middle of the field. Teammate will collect it much easier that way. <laughs> that's kind of what we've been saying. How, how do we talk up a guy who's doing stuff like that? Two saves to his name, and the second one, a game-winning pass over to his team. And G2, <laughs> yeah, I'd take a timeout after that one, too. Yeah, it's like JNAPS has to be so frustrated because it's not like he was in a position where he couldn't go and attack that ball. He was camped up there on the backboard, and he was behind the play. He could dive across with that pass, and what can you do? The placement was so good. <laughs> Typical found the only open spot in the net in the top left-hand corner. Fair enough. I mean, yeah, I got to take a time out as well. Just be like, we're not losing. We're not <laughs> getting absolutely smashed by FaZe Clan. They're just making good plays. And sometimes yeah. you just need a moment to collect yourselves and say, I don't think, I really don't think you have to change anything if you're G2. I think you've got a winning game plan. <laughs> and let's just, since we have some time here, Cheese, re reiterate the stakes here. G2 beating FaZe would clinch the major for both G2 and complexity. If G2 doesn't beat FaZe, then Complexity can clinch by beating Gen G. So uh, still opportunity for uh, Complexity if G2 doesn't uh, win here today. Uh, the storyline's a little bit longer for FaZe um, if they win here today, but so far, so good. And I think if we're talking about G2, in this, oh, or in this, <laughs> this overtime, in this timeout, I feel like the message has to be something along the lines of, hey, we're not necessarily playing poorly. Yeah, like, I don't think any of these games well. have been bad. I, in my head, when I think of this game, and I look at game one, I say, boy, those are some really good plays from FaZe. You know, first killer slotting it top right in game one. You had Mist kind of poking it free. You had that second touch from first killer in this game that flicks it back to the other side in yeah. immaculate yeah. fashion in zero <laughs> seconds. I mean, for G2, the message can't be, hey, we're not playing great. Sure, maybe they're, they're not playing to full potential right now, but I don't think it's that You're bad. You're certainly not G2. playing bad. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. I'm with you. I, I think uh, G2's got the right idea. They know what they're going to get. Because I, I, I think the idea for, for G2 is like, look, if FaZe are going to have to beat us, we're going to make them score plays like that, right? You're going to have to force First Killer to hit the perfect touch out across the middle of the pitch and have someone actually be there to slot at top left. They had defenders if you're G2. It's not like they were out of position and they could do absolutely nothing about it. It was, it needs to be perfect. And when push has come to shove throughout this series, FaZe has executed. Yeah. Sometimes that's what it comes down to. And it's important to kind of give them their kudos on that because I feel like that hasn't been the case with FaZe. The, the execution hasn't been there. And in a series like this where you're playing G2 in a top four situation, especially after your previous regional, I think there's some extra pressure on FaZe to perform here. Well, they may get one back. That execution Oof. is so crucial and missed again a little floater beating G2 here in the box. That's just a straight air dribble. 
I mean, yeah, it's aimed at the top right. In Chicago, you can see he's diving across that goal line. He got scared. He wasn't sure if that was in or out, and he didn't have a lot of boost, so it's not like he could just wait. Took his best guess and unfortunately went careening all the way into the back of the goal, so he couldn't save the second shot. And it's like, yeah, you can say typical didn't execute there, but he certainly executed good enough. <laughs> yeah. Got the defense moving. That's what matters. Here's typical again. He'll just blast it downfield. Is there no options there. Scoring As first again, I believe. Yeah. I think that's... Have they... I think they scored first every game. Just about. They've been extremely strong in the first minute or so. G2 seems to have crumbled in most of these games. Here's Jane F shot oh. off the post and it will throw an arm and climb in. <laughs> that's, that's the right way to put it. You see that big pass across and you're like, that's got to be a goal. And you see it oh. going left and you're just like, oh, no. <laughs> Takes a great hop, like you said, just slingshotting back across the net into the far side. j -Naps will collect G2, find a quick equalizer. I think that's what you need because you never want to take that time out, get scored on in the first minute and then play for three, four minutes with getting absolutely nothing done. So sigh of relief, breath of fresh air. If you're a G2 fan, you're right back in this one. Well, uh, and you know, in all these games for G2, they've been able to respond. They've been able to put up one against FaZe. They might be able to get another one here. JNAPS, who's been playing so well for G2 today, both offensively and defensively. It's gonna have to come up big here. Atomic, typical, just poking it by, and G2 looking for the long ball. JNAPS into the corner, and it's met by a missed clear. Typical just trying to back pass that, but he actually really kind of uh, <laughs> threw that one to the Wolves, and thankfully no one in position for G2 to capitalize. Trying to regain some footing here. If you're a G2 fan, it may come through with the physicality. Typical tries to go and get out early. First killer with the right idea. Rotate across the back line and play support for whatever comes your way. If they hit the shot, they hit the shot. And FaZe get out of a sticky spot. The last man. In, on both teams have been so important on the transition because the transitions are happening happening so fast for both sides. You see Mist, you've seen Atomic hit so deep when they're on offense just so they don't give up a one over the top as it's happened to both sides now. G2 not quite done pushing just yet. First killer and Mist. Trying to clear the space. Pace of play has slowed down at least a little bit. Seems to be that control is the name of the game for both teams now, trying to limit the possession. The opposition, Chicago even taking his time here. He says, no one's coming for me. I want to try and catch this ball. And unfortunately for him, he didn't get good enough control of it. And now FaZe has surged forward, trying to capitalize on that oh. missed touch. Oh, good touch by Mist. He was the last one there, and it almost squeaked by. Here comes Chicago. Mist doing well just to, get any, just to get any touch on that ball, prevent the transition, the counterattack from G2 that we've seen really bite phase a couple times. Here's typical back wall, looking for follow up, goes over all of G2, missed. We'll choose the back wall against one once more and it's Chicago who clears it away. Big clears, big touches I should say from phase, yep. but nothing in front of the net, no follow up quite yet. It is. Get that ball out of here. See that pressure start to creep in. G2 knows. We're about to hit last life here. 50 seconds. One goal could be the decider. They're certainly going to make sure that they have all their ducks in a row. Atomic to JNAPS. Uh -oh. And that's an excellent ball. Bottom left corner. Absolute ice. And this is where G2 scary. Chicago finds Atomic. Free flip pass over to JNAPS. Oh, one, good. two, three. Left shot side and put away by G2. 47 seconds left and the offense comes alive. That is so hard to have the ball coming right to left. And you get the ball on the left side of your car to keep it going further left. That's <laughs> that was a thing of beauty from Jane Evans. But everyone misses oh, the ball. They all win. Faze could have scored. They get a piece of Chicago on the way out. So G2 doesn't have a free oh my security goodness. goal here. But Faze, I, I don't know if they should have scored there, but it certainly felt like it. They literally struck out. All three of them went for that ball, and nobody got a piece of it. And I know a few of them were stretching. 
They knew the net was vulnerable. Now a shot missed off the crossbar Ooh. save, and things starting to get dicey here for FaZe. They are able to break out with less than 10 to go. Not loud enough clear. Huge pinch across. Mist is playing a little too close. He can't make the adjustment. Trying to float one into the middle for Sipical. That's a slow ball. First killer trying to get it bouncing. Unfortunately, it's going to kick flat. It will go all the way to game six. G2 Esports hit a beauty of a transition and earn themselves another five minutes. Wow. <laughs> Look at, look at the scoreline. We we had one earlier where Mist is on 900. <laughs> right. If that doesn't tell you that this one was boom the ball back and forth and see what happens all game, I don't know what was. I, for FaZe, I mean, I don't know what happened there. Felt like <laughs> you had to score that one and so they forced it and ultimately couldn't come up with it. But man, this passing play from G2, it's a work of art. Uh. It's what they do. It's the hallmark of G2 right there. That passing play, if I showed that play, to a lot of people that watch this game, that watch North American Rocket League, I think more than half would say that's a G2 passing play. That's just what they do. That's what they've always done. In any iteration of the roster, that's what they've always done. And it works so well. And it just flows down the field into the opposition's net. They move it quite efficiently up the field when they've got the space. They execute it brilliantly. Find that go-ahead goal. Beautiful shot, beautiful passing. And phase. Maybe a little bit frustrated, can't score again off the rip here on Neo Tokyo, but not done yet. Ball for oh. typical Atomic. I have no idea how you figure out where that ball is going, but he has made a huge save. Well, it was shot in his vicinity. And FaZe trying to keep their streak going of scoring every game first. Here's first killer. He's up quickly and denied by the defense. Atomic will get demoed, typical. Try to capitalize. First killer, can he get it by? He does, and FaZe once again, score first. Just said, press the go button. Great demo from Sipical, and Chicago kind of giving up on the ball right there. He had no boost, so maybe he just realized it was pointless. It was better to go try back, try and defend the net on the back end, because I think he just knew that with that demo coming through, no one was going to be back there, so he took his chances. Unfortunately for him, couldn't quite cover up. And FaZe once more. Out in front early, sub one minute into the game. We'll see if that will lead them to success this time because they get into game seven, start to get a little bit worried if you're FaZe Clan thinking, I, I don't know, is this another where we're, another one where we strike out in top four? Because uh, if, if there was ever a series where you're thinking, yeah, FaZe should probably move on here, it's the series where they get up 3-1 early and yeah. they're looking good. Yeah, I just would go another one that would go down in history for FaZe that kind of slipped away from them. There's been a few like it where you feel like all signs point FaZe and then it just slips away, it crumbles. Here's first killer. He's going for what? the touch or the bump. I couldn't tell, but it doesn't matter. Fizz, or Fizz, miss. They'll get the goal. And FaZe, oh, double just up their lead. Touch. I, I mean, Atomic really just kind of dumps this ball forward. JNAPS is already forward on that FaZe half. He's collecting boost in their corner. Chicago's dead even with Atomic in the midfield. And that ball just gets punted straight down to FaZe. And I, I don't know, that was just a weird, weird setup from G2. And I think combine that with an awkward touch from Atomic and Chicago just thinking maybe Atomic had more control and was going to pump that one towards the backboard or something. Thinking he had time to grab that boost in the midfield. And that one just broke down from a decision-making standpoint somewhere along the line. And now G2 really find themselves in a oh, spot. Miss again. Puts another one away. Three goal lead here for FaZe in two minutes. Now, if you tank this one, I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there there will be there will be Reddit posts if they don't close <laughs> this one out. Let's just put it that way. You got a long way to go. If you're J2 G2, I you have to just be sitting there shake, shaking your head. And they're going to get one back. There's okay. one. Now you kind of write it off. Okay, you were down three, but you pretty much scored instantly off the kickoff. So yeah. you're, it's the same situation. You don't feel too bad anymore. And, and it's, it's so funny. You go from completely dejected to, okay, it's doable. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and, and exactly. I was about to say, you kind of neutralize the pain, putting that one away early and quickly. Plenty of time for G2. Oh, no. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> A pass from Atomic on his own goal line. Chicago's what I'm going to call it. It certainly wasn't like that. 
when they drew it up. Two minutes and 40 seconds, G2. Well, hello, JNAPS. <laughs> now it's G2 trying to get up there early and, and put FaZe in some bad spots. They may have just done it, but Chicago doesn't have the boost to cover up. Now he's got to sprint back down the center line and try and hold off a first killer with a flip reset off the wall. Mist is denied by JNAPS. Mist has been the follow-up man in this game for FaZe and in multiple games. Threatening there for first killer. Now typical to the sky. Gets his air dribble yoinked by Atomic and to the back wall. D2. Able to slow down the ball. FaZe here for a little bit, but yeah, they're not holding onto the ball here. FaZe still coming up with it. First killer in pursuit. We'll let it go for Sipical. Sipical now pops it up. What a bad pass, and it's just denied by Chicago. Breath of air here for G2, but now it's all about that support player, because you already know that highly unlikely that first player for G2 is just going to get through completely uncontested. A minute 40 on the clock. It, it should be deep rotations for FaZe. Now there's hardly any reason to press, at least extremely hard. And that was where you really put all that pressure on G2 to come up with some perfect plays, some perfect motion and movement to get through this defense. And there's a ball, typical, already aware of where that one's headed. Time is a ticking. You can see the passing place being set up for G2, but Bays are doing a good job of clogging up the lanes or winning those challenges and preventing the attack from continuing on for G2. And now, possible pass here. First killer going to take his time with this one. Less than a minute now. He's demoed. And G2 looking to press on. Atomic over to Jane Apps, and a pre-flip shot will be denied by Sipical. Laying touch, unfortunately, throws off Chicago's line. So Typical's going to steal all the boost on that phase side. But actually, everyone from phase kind of spreads out and gives this transition lane for G2. It actually goes across Whoa. the goal line. And understandably, Atomic not thinking that phase is just going to let it cross. G Nips has a chance and misses there. Whoa, whoa. will dip it towards Typical on the goal line. Maybe uh, uh, have your heart stick in your throat for a second, but uh, phase had that under control. And G2 just looking to score. Time left on the clock here. Remember, they got a quick kickoff goal early, or uh, after the third goal. Ooh. This one's going to drop down. Okay. Oh, that'll do it. That high clear is going to absolutely tank it. They have to waste so much time repositioning here. And indeed, that will close it out. Phase, get on the board early. Applied extra pressure, found three goals in under two minutes in game six, and they will knock off G2. JNAP, Chicago, and Atomic played a pretty solid series wow. across the board. First killer, Sipical, and Mist were not to be denied today. It's a top two finish this time. And I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not even going to say it. Uh, they, they never left. They're not back. They had just a trip up in the previous Winter Open. They're looking good here in the Winter Cup. Phase Clan taking down G2 is a high quality win in 4 2 fashion. And I really like the way they started off each of those games that she used. When they get that first goal, that's really important. Something that I don't think you see a lot from Phase 2 is just starting off hot. And I think they did here against G2. And that's exactly what you got to do to beat teams like G2. They find themselves in a final. Yeah, excellent job all across the board from. Baze Clan, a well-deserved appearance in the Grand Final. Who knows who their opposition is going to be? Genji or Complexity? Find out in just a moment. You're watching the RLCS and A Cup. We'll see you in a bit. save an average of two times more with our smart savings tools. For everything we want, we're all better off with an ally.
Everything's happening. You know me. Yeah. 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 to the backboard, tries to send one to the back of the net, and he will triple touch. You said the double might work out. How about a triple? Oh, oh my. This time. G2 versus FaZe Clan gave us everything and more as both of those teams battled out to try to get into the grand finals. FaZe Clan, absolutely amazing performance and we have an amazing player with us as well. And first killer, first killer, congratulations on making the grand final. This is uh, very big for you guys. I mean, you guys started to split a little shaky and you bounced back. Talk to me about the kind of mindset in that bounce back going into this event? Uh, I think after the first regional, we didn't prepare properly at all. And our mental was just like really bad. So for this tournament, we just said that we need to prepare properly. So we just started like practicing a lot more and just like doing VOD reviews, like seeing how we wanted to play. Cause I think before we would just like play and whatever happens, happens. Like we didn't actually have a game plan. So we figured out that we then need to like actually have a game plan so that we can beat every team and we're not inconsistent from one day to the next. 
so and that's really good to you guys were able to come up with that game plan i want to talk a little bit more mm -hmm. about that in terms of you and your teammates as well How, do you feel like that game plan has kind of allowed you guys to all grow together a bit more yeah this new game plan involves all of us like we we all like support each other we're kind of like not copying gen g but we're trying to like we got inspired by them since they like use each other a lot we mm. we also want to use each other a lot like every single person equal you know equal amount of time on the ball so that we can you know use our mechanics because like i feel like we have one of the best like we have the best mechanics in the game in my like if we're all on and it's just like if we do that i feel like we're insane that, I mean, you guys are saying I'll give you that much. Now, talk to me about uh, the rest of the day here. Jinji versus Complexity, that's the next matchup. Uh, predictions for that. Who do you want to see in the finals? I want to play Jinji in the finals. I want to take them down. I feel like it's they've been they've been destroying us for way too long. I like that. I like that. And then, of course, you know, if you guys are in that race for the major. You want to get back in there. You know, the performance in Rotterdam, I would, I, if, if I could speak for you, probably wouldn't, wasn't up to your expectations. If, if you guys make it into San Diego, I mean, are you guys coming in with a completely different approach and a different mindset? Like, what, what's that goal for you? Uh, I think we're going to do better in San Diego because our mentality has improved a lot since uh, Rotterdam. And yeah i think top two is my expectation at least uh, i mean I, I would love to see it too personally now i want to talk again about you know you all your supporters not counting a certain someone i'm not going to name uh that's that's a jinx but everybody else who has been supportive to you and has been uh just getting behind you guys through your ups and downs is there anything you want to say to them uh, i appreciate all the fans to be honest like I read every guy, everything you guys put on Twitter, everything, and seeing you guys like still supporting us, even though when you know we went out last regional, like really bad result, you guys are still supporting us, and that really means a lot to me. Hey, good, good stuff. And again, this is First Killer. First Killer, thank you so much for taking the time to interview us, or for me to interview you, and good luck in the finals. Thank you, Des. Hey, is able to knock G2 out of the Winter Cup in six games. G2 only taking down two of the games there. Honestly, this felt, the, 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 the performance felt flat from G2 from beginning to end to me. Am I crazy? I think you're maybe a little uh, bit crazy because I thought it was kind of close. I, because we have to talk about game four and that first killer touch was absolutely insane. We had super long overtimes as well. Maybe it was low scoring series, so maybe that's where it, it fell a little bit flat. But the one thing I love right here is that pass. What yeah. an insane pass. Zero seconds. And that's after that long overtime as well. So two games that were so incredibly close where FaZe came out on top. G2 did battle, but at the end of the day, it was a full team effort on the FaZe plan side. Yeah, and, and to me, I don't necessarily G think G2 felt flat per se, but I, I think you have to give a lot of credit because because FaZe executed a lot. And and I think you may have thought it felt flat because of like what you said, it was relatively low scoring. There were some games like sure. game one and two were both 4-1, but you know, they were really tight up until the last minute or so. And then it's like, okay, it ran away. So it's like, yeah. it really was a defensive battle generally across the board. And I, I think you got to give credit where it's due. FaZe, FaZe hit the shots when they absolutely needed to and, and they nailed it. I, I think maybe that's where the, the idea comes into my mind is that FaZe, when they had the shots to hit, they hit them. And there was at least three moments I can think of where G2 had the shot in front of them and they didn't. And I, and that just I, that is the thing I can count on G2 doing usually. So, uh, But no, well-fought battle between two high-level teams here. FaZe earns the spot in the Grand Finals. G2 still looking for that first Grand Finals oh, yeah. this season. On the other side of things, though, the best undisputed team in North America, and I would say the world, Gen.G Mobile One, gonna be taking on Complexity. We're gonna be trying to, uh, a rematch, a, a, a revenge match, Complexity trying to figure out how do we get through Gen.G here again. The Winter Open Grand Finals rematch, Complexity, what a performance they had throughout that tournament until they ran into Gen.G, where they lost four to one in that series. They did Brazil them though. And that was in game three. So complexity definitely has it in them. They do hold the head to head match record. They've beaten Gen G more than they have been beaten by them. So that is huge because no one else can really say that in the world. So that's a good sign for complexity. But Gen G is just a monster when it comes to playoff brackets. They get better every single day at Chiefs. Yes, absolutely agree. They get better is the right idea. And maybe uh, yesterday was the most sketchy one. If you've seen M uh, M80 versus Gen.G, if you didn't sure. go back and watch it, M80, one of the few teams to really put Gen.G through their paces. So, you know, if, if there's any game that shows you that they can bleed, that was it. 
and uh, complexity, like you said, they've also had uh, slightly more success than most other teams have had against Genji. So winning record for now, but who knows how long that stays the case? Because MG, I think they wake yeah. up and they say, you know what, we got surprised just today, and if there's any team out there that's not going to let that happen again. It's Genji. And we have to talk about that. When they played M80, when M80 was putting up numbers, a lot of demos were coming out against th 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 this team right here. So Complexity might be looking at that and be like, all right, M80 was a top four demo team in this tournament. When they were getting them on Gen G, it opened up a lot of space because we all know about Gen G. Full team effort. They know where all three members are on the field at any given time. So if you delete one, it's going to mess things up for them. So, like, they can't play their perfect Rock League anymore. So maybe we'll see some more demos coming out of Complexity. They normally don't go for them. They're bottom five uh, uh, in the tournament uh, in that stat. But that might be where they find their blueprint to take down this squad. De demos, I feel like, is, a, is one of those strategies you really do have to grind. You do have to practice it, and drill. Yes. Sure. It is yeah. a delicate balance. Because, I mean, it, it's very easy to... Like, if you remember, you know, Europe a few seasons ago with Flakes, where he was just like, you know what, I'm just going to go smash people. And, like, while that's fun to watch, it really does put a lot of pressure on oh, the yeah. people behind you to play pretty much bang on perfect against potentially three people on defense. And that's not an easy thing. Like, people give, you know, Space Station a lot of credit for pioneering that whole demo, like, mm -hmm. meta, and, and you have to work at it. It's a delicate balance between, oh, yeah. okay, we've overextended and we've hung people out to dry, or we're opening up space and we're starting counterattacks with teeth to them. Now, that doesn't mean that, that that you have to necessarily go for, like, number one demos per game, you know, like crazy. Just a little more physicality, like, out of this series might be what you need, because you know that that might help just enough to get you over the hump. Well, chat, let us know who you think is going to win. Hashtag COL, hashtag GGM1. We can throw out the predictions we made going into the game here. I uh, I, I do think, uh, Gibbs, we've been saying, we've been saying that, that Genji's got to lose eventually. I, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's here though. It, so it's hard because if Complexity looked better uh, the, when they played Koi, I might have, might have had a chance in this pick, but I felt like, a Koi didn't play that well, and it was still a close series. So I think, uh, based on that, you have to assume that every single time we see Gen G on a brand new day, they get better and better. That's going to be very hard to fix all those issues from yesterday. For sure. No, you you, you got Gen G as well, Good Chiefs. Are you going? Do you think yeah, I like Gen G. This? Turtle and I said they were winning the whole thing. I, I think Gen G goes back to back, uh, just like K Corp did. So I, I've got Gen G through to the finals. What a story that would be, folks. They've got another. They got two more matches to complete to make it happen. Uh, chat is also favoring Gen G. Complexity's got their work cut out for them. They have were able to find the wins on Gen G early in the season. They're gonna have to dig back and find that same energy if they want to play in their second grand finals in a row. Gen G versus Complexity. Game one starts. Now. One more step to get to the grand finals. Halfway through the winter split, Complexity and Gen G. They met in the grand finals in the last regional, but only one gets to sit there this time, Turtle. Oh, yeah. We've got a juicy rematch here between these two uh, very, very top dogs of North America, especially Complexity, as of recent, uh, have been playing fantastic. They've been putting in the hours, putting in the work, and you can see just how that's affecting their gameplay on the pitch. And already we're seeing some demos out of AJG, which is something that I immediately wanted to talk about, and I completely agree with Gibbs. If you go back and watch the M80 series against Gen G, the demos in particular from Kinsey, those were so impactful on this roster and they made Gen G so uncomfortable and we're seeing that immediately within Complexity's game plan. For Gen G, Turtle, we casted that M80 series yesterday. Uh, Nolly gonna take this one up Ooh. on a beautiful air dribble, but Ray's Wolf takes it away. And M80 showed, like a Chiefs was saying at the end of that death segment, that there are some cracks there. And if anyone was gonna show you the blueprint, M80 may have done that. And Complexity, they've played them close. They're one of the only teams that have actually beaten Gen G in the yep. past. Granted, not in a best of seven situation. Right now, they're under pressure, wow. and Gen G will strike first. Yep, and Gen G under that pressure. Indeed, you got demos, you're taking them out, but still, they find a way to move forward as a unit, to find each other across the field. This is a routine backboard play. Get the follow up, striking first is Gen G. And it's so difficult, Jorby. I, I really can't express it. You watch all the replays, you look at what weaknesses they might have shown yesterday. Uh, there were very far and 
few between uh, of those weaknesses. We didn't see many of them. And now, I guess one is going to crack through the defense not looking great at the response and complexity. Yeah, Nolly tries to turn and then he side flips, trying to make the 50 happen. Really, a front flip kills the ball, but CRR was also in the area. And Nolly was the last man back. Jack was still hurrying up, so I'm not sure even if Nolly makes good contact on that 50, if he can get through both CRR and Ray's Bull. CRR began that whole thing with a great flip reset, or a, not, not a flip reset, but just a good pass mm -hmm. in the midfield. And you really can't count out that complexity team at all. No, no, you can't. At any stage during this series, CRR looking for another clear. Yeah, and I definitely think that's a name we're going to repeat a lot on the side of complexity is going to be CRR. I mean, he was coming alive against Koi uh, in that quarterfinal matchup. Nearly 90% goal participation, 4.5 shots per game, 1.67 goals per game, which means he's converting 37% of his shots. I mean, the man was an absolute monster. And if you want to have that same level of offense, you're certainly going to want him to step up, but somebody who's stepping up on the other side is going to be chronic. That's a nice one for chronic. Gets the reset. Last man back, AJG. Rays will try to follow it. And AJG, Ooh. he tries to turn his car to get the dodge, but can't quite find the timing. And Chronic, as he flipped into the ball, he got an extra little touch as his car rolled into it. And that gave it that little bit extra speed. I think AJG had it lined up well. He just wasn't expecting oh. another touch. And now they bounced off the inside of the post. Chronic, who has scored many bangers for Gen G. Hang on, three point oh pass, my. four point pass. They can't connect. Nolly didn't have anything left. Jack left waiting by himself. He stops Raysville in midfield. Good composure though from AJG. Not panicking on the goal line, even though it looks scary. Decided to leave the ball, knowing that they're gonna have some space. And Abjack and Nolly are a bit confused, but they do organize themselves out here. And obviously you don't want to let this game get too out of your own control. Crucial goal line saves from complexity. They're back down the other end. And so far, Gen G pretty much a routine game for them. Complexity are back to the drawing board to try and figure out how to break through and tie it up. Could be a breakthrough clear, but no. Jack just finds Nolly downfield. And wants the bump. Makes it awkward for Ray's Bull. 50 works for Chronic. He stays on it. He's got enough, but not too much. AJG puts the ball back down. DRR off the ceiling. Oh and oh, maybe a reset. No, it didn't look like he had one. Ray's Bull. Back to HAG. Double tab. And he doesn't have enough boost. There's a corner steal for CRR. But he gets stomped on the side wall that made that approach awkward. And complexity do have midfield turtle, but they haven't really generated a lot of chances on this Gen G defense. Jack Woo! almost got bumped and was taken away regardless. All right, we'll see if these demos can come out. Now, Ray's Bull is looking for a 50 50 on the goal line. A couple of back and forth challenges, but this is definitely the longest sequence of events we've seen in the Gen G half, and as soon as I mention that, they do break out Chronic through the corner. Good 50-50 from him, and then he tried oh. to take out Ray's Bull. The bump almost connected, but narrowly missed it was Ray's Bull. And that would have been more effective had that shot been away from where he had been sitting. It's awkward for CRR, but no contact from Gen G. This was happening to Gen G yesterday as well. Ray's Bull flips this out. But on a lot of their quick passes, they weren't connecting them against M80, and that allowed M80 to stick around where Genji usually connect on those this weekend. They haven't connected on every single one of them. Might be enough of a hole for Complexity to punch through, but they're losing the ball. Jack and Chronic combined, but they don't get anything. CRR able to stop the push. Complexity just don't have enough in the tank. HAG, he's got 80, but he's away from the ball. Everybody lining up here on defense for Complexity, but Jack's in the oh, air, man. Jack's in the net. Two goals up. And what was the situation here for, for CRR, he had plenty of boost, 91 boost to his name. He's in the goal line, and I just don't think he sees Abjack jumping up so early. Initially, it looks like CRR is out of boost, can't go for the ball, but no, he had plenty in the tank, just didn't opt to go in for that. And Abjack says, thank you very much, I'll take a free shot. The May just have things for the first game. Complexity, plenty to look at in the shot total. Nine. They've outshot Gen G, but have they controlled the game more than they have? Don't know if they did in game number one. So complexity. Now their work cut out for them after game number one. Gen G start off strong. We'll see what Forbidden Temple holds for us. 
it was a, a better start, I'd say, than a uh, finish for Complexity. They came out the gate swinging with physical gameplay. AJG was getting aggressive. That first man would be uh, much stronger with his rotations. He'd take the midfield boost, then continue forward looking for a player to take out. Then as soon as Genji got on the board, things slowed down. And I also do like the approach every now and then from Complexity to, to slow things down on the goal line. They're trying to be cautious of where everybody's located from Gen G. And you can see the hype from Avjack already. You love to see that as we get into this series, but I thought Complexity, they looked good, they looked composed, but at times they didn't know when to slow the pace down. And that played right there from CRR, just unaware of where the opposition is, when Gen G's gonna go for a shot and when they're not. I, I gotta say, uh, Hype Jack is probably my favorite version of apparently Jack yeah. so far. Like watching him just get excited. You remember when he was on Dignitas, there, there really wasn't a lot of that. He was kind of still in yeah. his shell. But ever since he joined Gen G, and honestly, ever since he won a major, Jack is coming out. I love, yeah. I, I love the energy. I love seeing Jack uh, show himself Absolutely. like that. I love it when anyone shows their emotion in these matches. <laughs> how, how, how like how much of themselves is yeah. in the game? I, I mean, there's that. there's so much adrenaline that is pumping through your system, Jorby. As a player, you're on this pitch. I mean, you're competing not only for, uh, I mean, not necessarily for Gen G, but for complexity, major spots, major points. Uh, season points, money is on the line as well. There is so much riding on each individual series. So, you know, the hype is going to come out. And that's from Abjack, the man who just got the save there. And if you paid attention yesterday, we did interview Abjack. He said he had a sluggish day, but look at this play. Nothing about it looks sluggish. They were trying to thread that ball between each other. Nice little give and go, but it's not going to create anything. Complexity are creating chances, though. Great shot here from CRR and a nice little saucy pass from Raze. Well, Jack jumps early for it, trying to predict where CRR is going to shoot it. He's thinking high. Wow. CRR sees him jump, goes low. Great adjustment on the back end. And just like that, complexity have a lead. And that's so efficient too. One opportunity down the other end, and they're able to score off of that single transition where it looked like it was going to be a Gen G goal to start things off. Complexity, they're going to need to do that all series long. Hold off and you really fend off against Gen G's incredible passing game. And whenever you get one chance, one opportunity, you have to make it count. They do so in game two. Let's see if they can capture it. Nice pass, CRR, but follow ups are going to wait. Race Bull next up. Where can Complexity find their way through? The boost pads. Canister is starting to be won by Gen G, but Race Bull wins a massive 50. This puts everyone back in the rotation. And El Toro just misses the post. Almost had the double, would have been a two goal lead. Instead, it's Genji headed the other way. Chronic around the corner. And a whifty whifty in front, back to the corner. But even just that look from Ray's Bull is going to fill all of these players up with confidence. They're going for the, for the double tap. You're so close to hitting it. You still have the lead. You're putting shots on target. You're getting chances, you're generating them. This is perfect stuff from Complexity. Now AJG is also looking for demos. Seems like game one, all those mistakes, they patched up the holes, put a Band-Aid on it, and they are working so efficiently. Oh, good pass again from Ray's Bolt. Nolly, no boost, caught, but the shot is wide. AJG, another Ooh. pass denied. Chronic gets underneath it. CRR was waiting. He gets chipped off the plate. Quick shot. Big save from Ray's Bolt again. They're hitting it right into him, making it easy for complexity, but they got to stop him again. Chronic denied. Ray's Bull ain't giving him any chance on that ball. But can they get? Possession away from Gen G. Jack, nice little catch. He's out of boost to drop off the Chronic. He wins against the RR. Chronic, one, hit. two, oh. three, oh. Jack, go! What more do you want from Chronic? He takes it himself, past two players, flip reset, off the backboard into Jack. And that is one of the most mechanical passes we have seen, I'd say, all tournament long. What a play, Chronic setting up his teammates. Now as we approach I mean, halftime, that's how you that's how you want to go into halftime, Jordan. We were calling his name during the M80 series. They're calling his name during the first regional every single time. This man gets behind the ball. I mean, he's just he's insane. Ray's bull trying to set this up for HHG. What's net? Now he's there. I mean, and how crucial is that for this Gen G roster when typically it feels like almost every goal, Jorby, is a team play, right? And you're not getting too many solo plays. Uh, they're so efficient as a unit. 
And obviously that was a passing play from Chronic, but 95% of the work was that solo play from Chronic. How nice must it be to have this star player on your team to do that much damage? Absolutely. And you've got to give credit to Complexity's defense overall. It takes that kind of force oh, and that man. kind of shot. Nolly hits on backside. Two to one. And this is what I'm talking about, setting each other up. This is a back and forth <laughs> pass from Abject to Nolly. And that's the typical routine passing play that we expect from Denji, but they can also throw in the solo plays if they want to. Just the, the touches that they get, like, always in a perfect spot for their teammate. Yeah. And the, the crazy thing, Jorby, is a lot of these touches are situations where they could easily, easily take the solo route. Uh, Abtech in that situation could have looked for a flip reset, could have gone off the backboard. There were so many options, but they're trying to utilize each other as much as possible. Nobody on this roster wants to play selfishly. Watch that he having some struggles keeping the ball away from Gen G here in the orange half. Razeville just has to give Nolly the respect. Now Gen G just gets to play back and forth. Jack just gonna let it go. Forced is two up. Razeville did get the ball out. Chronic, or uh, Nolly didn't see a way in. Chronic's back in. Jack just missing that touch. Oh no, uh -oh. oh no. Nolly oh, back flip. This could be a chance. Brazewell didn't have a lot of boost. He couldn't exactly get up there quickly. Jack gets deleted. CRR's got the midfield boost. AJG deep on the wing. And this still not really working out. Ball kicked out to the corner. CRR, nice pass to raise both. Quick shot taken away. Still good pressure though. They get another corner boost steal. They've got him locked down. But then they back up off the play. They get a demo. And Complexity still have offense. CRR holds on to the dodge, but it's not good enough. AJG, there's the midfield. CRR collects that midfield boost. Who's got the ball yep. and forces CRR and Razeball to get back? That one's a little risky. And if you didn't touch that one, Razeball's going to have to make a more difficult save than that one was. Nolly oh, straight down read. into the net. And Gen G securing another game win here. And they're winning the 50 50s. They're stabilizing too. We just recently saw a miscommunication between Nolly as that third man, but 20 seconds of defending and they're back on offense. Nolly can win the 50 50, follow it up off the backboard. Gen G, my goodness, they have bounced back. It wasn't the best start to this game individually as well as the first game, but they've We're downloaded complexity. A bump on the play as well. They're not going to give complexity a second goal, not at all. Here we go into game number three. Genji still on a tear. Jack getting that bump after Nolly missed the ball. One mistake cleans up with another great play. And Genji, wow. this is what makes them so frustrating if you yeah. are facing them, where it's not a big score line. You're losing by one for They're most of the game. Yeah. But you just can't get control of the ball. You, you, you actually can't dictate pace of play. And Complexity had a couple of those chances. But how many times they were just waiting for Genji yeah. just to give the, give them the ball. But you can only move back to midfield and wait for Genji to give you the ball if you've earned the control of the pitch. And Complexity weren't fully controlling the pitch. Genji had boost. They're like, fine, if you want to sit back there, we'll keep making you work for midfield. We're not just going to give the ball back to you. They're, they're so good with controlling the yeah. ball, and that helps them control the game. Complexity struggling to get consistent opportunities. And that's the reason why we do see a timeout call for Complexity trying to figure out what exactly it is they need to change. Again, I don't think this is a bad performance whatsoever from Complexity. It's just that age old question now as we get into more and more of this season, that is how do you defeat Gen G? How do you break through? It feels almost like you need to have a near perfect game plan, especially with these transitions. I mean, I, I'm just thinking back to that game. I, the only difference I could have seen for for complexity would have been punishing a little bit quicker on Nolly's positioning. You know, we, we saw that one moment where he was pushed too far forward. It was raisable up to go for a 50-50 and they had a good sequence of shots and that was it. You had to score. They gave Genji a chance to stabilize and that was their biggest mistake because well, you can see right now on your screens what happens whenever you let them stabilize and get on your own half. That touch from Jack, man. I mean, uh, what are you going to do, Joby? What's like the that, answer? What, what do you do when Jack comes back from your backboard and then just gets like the <laughs> sauciest pass coming the opposite way over at Nolly? What are you supposed to do about that? Bro, you, I, like, you see Jack going to the air and you're like, okay, well, like, what is he going to do with that? He's not going to like put that into it. He's like, oh, wait. 
that's just a perfect touch to Nolly. Like, it wasn't like yeah. off to the wall where Nolly had to like catch it and make a play. No, this man suspended the ball in midair, going the other way, and Nolly's like, thanks, now I'm gonna score. Like, just, just <laughs> can't do anything against this dude. You just well, don't see this kind of regional play from any team. You gotta calm down, man. They're trying, okay? They're trying, They're trying. their best, okay? We're seeing uh, demos come through. We're seeing their play style change a little bit. They're shape-shifting into different styles to figure out what's gonna crack the code. It's possible, okay? I don't necessarily know what the perfect answer is, but complexity are on to something. I, you can't count them out yet. It's game three. This is exactly where they got their first game in the previous series they fought in the grand finals of the Winter Open. Let's see if they can get back into it, potentially win a game themselves. If you rewind to yesterday's series against M80, you might be asking yourself, how did M80 claw back into that series? I think a big component of it was the physical game. And they, they had those in the last game. They had they, those. You could see it. But, but they, I, I wasn't asking. I don't know. If, I don't know if they had them. Like M80 had them, though. Right. You know, like You're M80 right. were getting like backline demos on the goal line. Yeah. And that was really that was really freezing Gen G's ability to transition. Like the, the thing that you're talking about that's been so difficult for complexity to handle. Right. You, you might have to be more consistent in a it, physical game. You know, I'm not feel... saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying like also like that, I, I think where those demos right, are right. coming for complexity, Matt. When it's, it's about going for them throughout the entire game. I feel like complexity will randomly remember, oh, I should probably start going for demos when they push out on offense. But you need to always be looking for that opportunity. Not necessarily always go for the demo, but always keep your eyes open with those rotations, knowing when you could or could not go for the demo. And in the previous game, it felt like they only went for them on the offensive side when they looked comfortable. Right now, what M80 did was just every chance they got, even rotating back, they'd look for a demo, look for a boost grab. You've got to just take every factor away from Gen G to get a chance on their own net. CRR after the timeout, switching off of his Fennec into an Octane, hoping to find some mental comfort. Yeah. As they look for a way in Gen G. Right now, they were just looking for a clear. They do get one, but even that touch from Jack to Chronic. It's back to midfield, and I mean, that touch from AJG, you're really just delaying as the rest of Complexity were rotating back for boost. They can't have confidence pushing up right now. There's always an orange car in the way, even right here, Rays Bowl. Quick work to get that 50. Now for Complexity, the work okay. begins in midfield as they get back to the corner. It's not the most ideal clear from AJG, but he does take a boost and can rotate out cleanly. AJG gets a demo on Chronic, which should open up space, but of course, Nali is not going to hesitate in his rotation, and Chronic is back on the other side. Abjack looking for anything off the sidewall, quickly denied, but they're utilizing each other, finding everyone in this space, and this is a double commit, huge opportunity for complexity, but they themselves double committed, and now they can't punish. It's back in the hands of Gen G. Yeah, the only man who could have was Ray's Bowl, and he had no boost. He had picked up a canister on his way to the ball, but by that point, it's already too late. That's the RR. Ray's Bowl. Get the ball back to the about the third. And there's oh, CRR covered. and AJG. CR jumpy there. Yeah. It didn't amount to much, but it's those little things, Turtle, like you're talking about. That, that's the difference. Yeah, that, if you that is beat literally Gen the difference. If you want to slip through this defense, and, and put up quality opportunities against Gen G. You cannot hesitate in those moments. And Gen G, they're just sliding around on ice skates through your defense, finding the hole. Oh. Nolly to Chronic, Chronic to Abjack, Abjack back to Chronic for the steal. And it's 1 0. And it's back to CRR and how he handled that 50. He's trying to time when I believe it was Chronic was going to flip into that ball, and he ends up just flipping right by it. That put AJG in. An unfortunate position where he had to oh. try to dive for that pass. It didn't work out. Complexity. Goals have been at a premium, and they haven't been able to afford it. Chronic, though, drops the ball to Rays Bowl. CRR demo on the left side, but is it enough? It may not be, because Jack just squirreled the ball away. Now Rays Bowl up in the air against Chronic. He's gone. Chronic, not done. Over to Nolly, backs it up. And Jack first to the ball. Genji will retain possession. AJG quickly. And there's another good defensive stand for Complexity. Yeah, but these clears are just going right back into the hands of Gen G. They're getting suffocated, the boost is stolen. They're losing 50-50s like this one from Chronic now, who's over Ray's Bull, doesn't have the perfect touch. The follow-up oh. save by CRR keeps them within one, and their homes are still alive. No boost either, had to go quickly. Chronic gets a little chip. Now it's flipped over Nolly. Chronic needs to make the grab. He does. 
Nolly first to it, non-touch. But that froze Raze Bull, and he was able to win the 50. Maybe this could be a setup. Here's CRR, but denied. Couldn't get there in time on AJG's pass. A little bit of oh. space, a pass, we go. another one to Raze Bull. High pop, everyone frozen, Jack comes back, and it doesn't matter. The next layer comes in for Gen G, and overlaps anything Complexity tried to do. One more, mate. Jack, up high, eyes him on the 50. Another clear going right into the hands of Gen G. Complexity, they can't even find their teammates downfield because they're all rotating back to get boost. And with 13 seconds left, this feels almost like a must win. Otherwise, we've got a reverse sweep in a best of seven. Final five underway. Gen G still winning challenges, finding the speed. And here we go. Keep this ball in the air. You need another miracle like you got against Koi. And I'm not sure if they can do it, but this ball is still up, Jorby. CRR, nice catch. 22. Oh. Got the 50. Keeps it up. A raise ball came with him. And Gen G will take the victory. One more to go to sweep their way into the grand final. Oh my goodness. This is just one game away now for Gen G to setting an RLCS record for the most grand finals made in a row. And this would be their sixth grand finals if they can win this next game, or of course, just this series in general. But it's not over yet. We've seen crazier things happen before. And Oh man, it's so difficult because complexity, they're not playing a perfect defense. Had I, had I seen their defense completely polished up, nobody's double committing, I would think there's a chance for them to battle back, but we're not seeing the, the most polished uh, positioning out of them. They're double committing when they could be transitioning and trying to punish. It's just not all connecting for the boys in blue, Jorby. It's not those small communication errors that you're seeing. Genji tend to cause those, and as we get a quick look at their cams, Vibes have been pretty good. Good Jack vibes, rocking good back and forth. He's antsy. He's ready. He's ready to get back yeah. in it. When it yesterday, Emotive it, Jack is my best. Is my yeah. favorite Jack, man. That's great. Yesterday, whenever he was talking to Daz, he said, oh, we had a bit of a sluggish day. Uh, I, for some reason, I wasn't feeling too energetic. And today, I mean, I think it was game one where we saw him completely pop off. So he's he's recovered. There, there is no more sluggish, apparently, Jack. He's ready. He's fired up and he wants to set an RLCS record and make it to the Grand Finals for the sixth time. Jack put it up high, AGG gets there. Genji immediately on offense. Complexity, we've talked a lot about the little things that have been working and the things that have not been working for them. We'll see if they can put together the right hand. CRR tries to deny them, he's back in his Fennec. Chronic flips it over one, but the rest of Genji are gonna wait on this transition. Okay, that's a good look though from Complexity. You have a player downfield waiting for a clear, a bit more organized, but still right back to Genji. Good interception there from Ray's Bull. And I think a big part of this game and getting back into it for Complexity is going to be your awareness of where Genji are trying to pass this ball with how efficiently they move as a unit. Uh, understanding where these passing lanes are getting created and how to intercept it is going to be huge moving forward. Ray's Bull pulling wide on this ball and he wins a good 50 against Jack. Just trying to work the corner as much as that as much as he can. Hard to do. Genji have been pretty solid on that front. Now Jack on the Jack. transition. Let's it Ooh. drop and oh Ray's Bull! It's all about timing, but he's just wow. off rhythm. And Abjack just got the demo on AJG. He opened up the space for himself, and Razeble thought he was going to go high. Abjack went low, and he gets the first goal. He just kind of, he slung it, and he said, here you go, Razeble. Yeah. What yeah. are you going to do? Figure this one out. I'm going to yeah. go. And Razeble surprise Pikachu meme. AJG. Yeah. Oh, missed that one. But got a 50. The force is two up. Doesn't really matter, though. There's what do you do? Oh. Nowhere to go. Chronic Look at how close control. he is. This is Jack this is just fair. pulls down field. Turtle. Or, just, yeah, it doesn't matter, man. Every time we think that a team is actually going to challenge Gen Z. Oh, no, dude. It's just easy. It's routine. This isn't anything crazy that they're doing. This is not going to be on a highlight reel. I mean, no one's clipping that honest, and putting it on ready. Hey. But it happens every single time with Gen G. I hope somebody clips that and puts it on Reddit because that that saved flip from Chronic was still nasty. I'm not going to lie. It might not be the craziest thing, but this oh. is definitely <laughs> crazy from Complexity. 3-10 on the clock, and they're back in. Look, there's a little bit of pinball here. Get CRR and then ding What on earth? Ding, ding, ding. High score! Right. Nice one, CRR. 
listen, if you're Gen Z, you can't Anything predict that. Anything that puts that. you in, Turtle. You can't predict that, okay? You're playing pinball, you're creating chaos. Maybe yeah. that's the key. Your moves Just throw everything. Yeah, there it is. Oh, never <laughs> oh mind. wait, All right. it's a kickoff goal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, your move. Your move, Gen G, and it's an easy response. <laughs> Uh, oh, complexity got plenty of time. Yeah, plenty of time. Don't let, don't let, don't, time. don't let that one get to you. Don't let it get to you. Uh, that's got a sting, though. I, you just get back in. It's a kickoff goal, but this is a good look for CRR. But we're looking at a 4-0 potentially, two-goal lead for Gen G. The one goal you got in this game was, like we talked about, pinball. I wouldn't necessarily say it was the most well thought out execution, but maybe that's that's what you want against Genji. You want to inflict as much chaos, try to ruin their rotations. Maybe that's why the demos from M80 were so effective. Good transition from Chronic to cut that one out, but Complexity slowly starting to build some possession. He's going for the shot. He had CRR there for a pass, but he also didn't have a lot of boosts. Oh. The power! Oh. AJG makes the post pay oh, and wow. gets Complexity their second goal. And now we're getting some highlights under a Chronic over Abjack, and he lands on top of the ball into the bottom right corner. That was basically a 1v3 past all players. And my goodness, hello Complexity. Is that another kickoff No, ball? it's not. Okay. No, we're, good. we're good, we're good. That one, you would have been gutted. There's another demo, but Chronic actually took out Razeful. CRR, no boost. Too hard for them to find that tying goal. Now they're getting bumped out of the play. Genji want to end this. Oh, Razeful with a great here touch. We go. CRR's got it. Tie game. Tie game indeed. We thought Complexity might be out of it. It was looking like a wash, but with that four touch from Abjack, Chronic's pushed out too far forward, and Nolly can't rotate back in time. All tied up. Here we go. Approaching the final two minutes. Complexity. What a mental game here to stay alive and stay determined. Let's see if Gen G can get it right back. Chronix took to the ceiling. He sees Jack downfield. Connects. Got the first, but Ray's Bull gets there. And stuffs that attack real cool. quick. Ray's Bull gets a nice flick. AJG ooh, denied ooh. by Jack, but CRR's there. Shot underneath. Wonderful. Oh! The striking, the accuracy, it has all stepped up for complexity. Every shot is an absolute banger under defenders, through the defense, finding the one pocket of space that you need to put your team in the lead. And complexity have stolen this lead back. Genji have given some of the openings that they hadn't shown in previous games. Complexity have punished those. And now it's about hanging on to this lead and not making any mistakes of your own. Cron, a quick shot, taken away. Complexity, they've gotten lots of minutes on defense. Let's see if they use oh, that man. experience to the best of their ability as Ray's Bull diving for that ball in the corner. It's gets a little tied up with Gen G. Ray's Bull on that carry, but couldn't connect with CRR. Now Jack just wins 250s. Only four boost, Ooh. and CRR barely makes contact. Forces Chronic onto the bar. Nolly in the air, and Ray's Bull takes it away. Complexity, they're getting to the third. Oh, demo. Nolly demos the backside. No one there. Gotta one more it. in. Bornowski for apparently Jack. Oh, Nolly is head hunting here against CRR, who is trying to take the boost, get back into position. They're feeling the stress and the pressure from Gen G. And they just break under the final minute, all tied up. One demo, and you can't count Gen G out yet. Another demo, just launched downfield by Chronic. Razeful, what's he got? CRR's frozen now. Has to wait. Jack plants him on the back That's wall. Much. Quick shot, maybe? No. AJG next up. Not a lot of boost here. What's if I won? Wants the fifth, okay. not gonna get it. And Jack gets a perfect bounce on his touch, and he's just gonna carry it downfield. Gen G, more pressure for complexity to handle. Oh, I love that though from CRR to hold onto the ball. Drop it down for Ray's Bull. That's the composure they were going for within the first few games. Oh, no. And now it's starting to work out. You say, oh, no, because this looks threatening, but CRR manages to sneak away and not let Nolly get a touch of it. Big clears. Look at the defense standing tall from complexity. But they need to hold on to midfield and at least force OT. Ray's Bull swings wide. Why does Nolly get the free possession? Now he tries to get in the bite. El Toro can't make it, but AJG backs him up. 
Chronic, one more. Jack on the side, cut off. AJG oh, keeps kept it up. Away, but oh, that's risky. <laughs> and here we go. Hey, he saw what CRR did previously against Koi, all right? You want to keep it up. Maybe you get another miracle of a shot, but we don't get a buzzer beater, and into OT we go. Oh, Nolly oh, gets goodness. a wide open shot. Gen G back to the grand finals. He knows what you're gonna do. He's seen your book. He's read it. He's not impressed. What a pass from Chronic. <laughs> and it's easy pickets for Nolly. Gen oh, G man. all smiles as they make it to another grand final. And another that's a, one. That's an RLCS record. Six grand finals in a row. This team is something else. They have just done what, what seems to be the unthinkable in Rocket League. You talk about consistency. It's the hardest thing to achieve, to find as a professional team. And Gen G, they have uncovered the missing pieces and put it all together, Jorby. Nothing, nothing more to say, so They're just a better team. It's true. It's true. Nobody has been able to beat this team. And, you know, it's funny, too, because, like, if you think back to Europe, Carmine Corp, or Carmine Corp, everybody, the, the, the only team that anyone's comparing Gen G to, they go 4-2 against German Amigos. They look kind of weak against German Amigos. It, it took some okay. big okay. plays. And then they absolutely stop semifinals. It's like the same story here with Gen G. They struggle a little bit against M80. M80 take two games. But then they never give Gen, or they never give complexity a chance in semis. Now they go to play face. First killer said he wanted them. Can he beat them? Find out after the break.
boy, we 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 hoped it would be close. We well, hoped it would be fun. Uh, but this is now eight games straight. Gen G has put the hurt on complexity, a second sweep in a row, and they advance to yet another grand finals. Gen G yet to place worse than second. They'll try to get another championship win here against FaZe Gift. Truly historic by Gen G. They just seem like they get better every single day, and they're uh, playing teams that are the top of North America right now. Complexity, an easy 4-0 for them. Outside of that final game where there was a little bit of bite, but man, oh man, the passing coming out of Gen G, the teamwork, it's just like unmatched in all of North America. I feel like we say that every time and they get to this point. It's just and better every time. Somehow yeah. we're still shocked. Are we? No, I don't think so. I mean, this is what we see for Genji every single time. And I think this one in particular, as you guys have been alluding to, has been a very strong one for them against a team that has given them tr um, some trouble in the past. But for Genji, it's the same game plan every single time we see them here in North America. And it feels like teams haven't got it figured out yet. Now, here's the thing, because we talk about this is an all-time record, most grand finals, like even BDS, RLCS X did not do this. And I thought we might never see a team like BDS again. And Gen G is doing it. And they came into the season as well. Very much uh, like that BDS, like kind of on the outside ranks, like a few people had a maybe top three because of an uh, it, uh, international tournament. But what Gen G is doing right now is unmatched yeah. in Rocket League history. That's insane. No, the the, the 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 thing with RLCSX, there was no international majors in the middle of it. They didn't have sure. to go and prove it and win a grand finals in that situation as, in, in, as well. They were only playing against the Europeans. So Genji doing that at the the fall major and now continuing through the winter. It's crazy stuff. It's crazy stuff, folks. We'll see how they do up against Phase. Phase seems to be having a pretty good day against G2 earlier. But before we get there, speaking of Phase, it's time for the Ally Assist of the Week. Today, it is going to the bananas play we saw <laughs> earlier. First killer hit this one. It was crazy, Gibbs. Yeah, we talk about like the Ally Assist of the Week. We can say the Ally Assist of the whole year right here. Because first killer, look at the clock. Zero on it. Look at the redirect pass. And that is game four to go up 3-1 on G2. He even gets the first touch and then the brilliant pass across the field to typical who slots it home. And it always feels good to receive a pass like that because you know it's now easy streak for typical first killer. What an unbelievable play. Unbelievable play indeed. Just like you rely on your allies in Rocket League, Ally is proud to be a relentless supporter for your financial well-being because we're all better off with an ally digitally, financially, and personally. Ally. Do it right. That's your ally assist of the week presented by First Killer, folks. And we'll see if he can hit any more of them, Corelli, in the finals. It's going to be Gen G versus FaZe for the Winter Cup Championship here. This is going to be crazy. So they've met before in a grand final in North America a few times, actually. FaZe got the better of them once, but then got smoked in the Fall Invitational 4-0 last time for Gen G at this point. They started off with a 7-1 victory in Game 1. FaZe certainly trying to make sure that doesn't happen again. We've had five regionals now in North America, and more than half has had this exact grand final, Gen G versus FaZe. They split That's one to one, great. but at fall major with Gen G, they also took down FaZe, so they beat them two times in a row. It seems like they figured them out, but First Killer even said, he's trying to copy their playbook. They're trying to turn FaZe into a complete three-man team, and last series, they did just that. They scored 13 goals, and all three members were involved a ton. I think it was missed, was nine goals involved. Both his teammates were at eight, so... They're all getting involved on the offensive side, but I think it's still a work in progress compared to a Gen G squad who looks like that, that teamwork is unmatched. It, it, is this if you're if you're just now tuning in, if, if you've kind of like been following the scene casually, Curly, I feel like you could really easily go like, oh, this is the the teamwork squad from Gen G versus just the craziest mechanics in the world on the other side that's just they don't need the teamwork. They're finding the teamwork on accident because they're just that good. Is that a fair assessment or is or is FaZe matching uh, Genji in the strategic department a little bit more closely than we give them credit for? I think how you described FaZe is on their bad days. I think today isn't a bad day. And I was reading through some comments after the series that Chiefs and I cast with FaZe and G2. And a lot of people were complimenting Typical and Miss. I think they absolutely deserve their flowers so far, especially against that G2 squad. They are contributing. It's not just the first killer show. It. It's always about him in some way, but it's not just the first killer show here today. 
everyone's contributing on phase. You can see missed on yep. the follow-up, especially offensively, something that's just paid off so much for phase against that uh, that G2 team. And they're going to need it here. They're going to need quick follow-ups against Gen G because Gen G are just so tightly knit. And not only that, we are getting two teams over 3-0 uh, in their groups. And this will be the first time in NA or Europe for winter that we'll get a team that goes completely flawless and wins. And I think it was also fall wow. as well. So this does not happen where a team has gotten undefeated in tournaments. It's so difficult to do it. Both phase in Gen G, 3-0, they were 9-1 in their groups. And then they've looked very, very clean throughout the playoffs as well. So we got our best two teams in the tournament, no doubt. This will either be a wonderful battle or a wonderful shock either way it should be a show hope you guys are ready for a great finish to the winter cup here get your votes in chat we'll go down the line Crelly, who you got phase or gen g put me up for phase baby this is Ooh, their time I, right. I think that they've looked good enough to beat gen g i don't think it's going to be a 4-0 uh for gen g again i also feel like a lot of people doubted phase for one singular loss and i think this is the best and brightest way that phase can bounce back and to kind of assert themselves over gen g here i absolutely think they can win here today gibbs is the jersey coming back out i'm always on <laughs> the phase clan side unless they play Gen G because I tried to do it at fall major and it did not work out well. Gen G dominated the last two times they have played. I have to go Gen G because they look so clean in that last series. They can't keep getting away with this, folks. The, the Gen G cannot <laughs> continue to get there. Someone's got to stop them eventually, but it's not right now. Gen G, I think, is also the wow. team in this spot. Wow. So we'll see, folks. The players are ready to go. They're tired of the talk, and Gen G's the fan favorite on the they're the favorite on the desk, fan favorite as well. The grand finals of the Winter Cup are upon us. Gen G versus FaZe. A best of seven to be crowned champion. Let's get into the game. The hottest start to any season we've ever seen in the RLCS continues. And Gen G, 16 and 1 in their last 17 series, looking for yet another crown. The team on the other side, though, is on a hot streak with FaZe Clan. They've been unbeatable at times. The can they turn this split around and that wasn't necessarily the best start for them, but maybe a good start in this series. Chance here, ball high, typical, trying to get that first goal, but will be sent away to the side. You got the two hottest offenses in the tournament. 2.6 goals per game out of FaZe Clan, led in large part by First Keller. This one though, coming from Mist, off the feed from FK, and FaZe strikes first. Oh, much respect. And look at this. Off the ceiling is missed. Great shot. Chronic wasn't even expecting it. And FaZe with a hot start here in game one. Just full control in the first 30 seconds. Make that now 20 goals for Miss in this tournament. Everybody always talks about his defense, but he is a very adept scorer as well. He's picked up a lot of the pieces for FaZe Clan in this event as opposed to the Winter Open. First killer, let that one go by. Missed there on the doorstep, almost picked up another, but Nolly right there in his face. Talks to first killer earlier today. Again, this new FaZe Clan kind of play style. He said he felt a bit inspired by Jinji, but that being said, he wants to take down this Jinji Mobile One team. The question is, is this new play style enough? It's gonna be a test going up against the team that's given him this inspiration. Missed tracking over. He's got a full tank of boost, usually the one the furthest back for FaZe Clan, as you would imagine, because of his defense. Typical, it would surprise everybody to know, he's usually the most forward for FaZe Clan. You'd think it'd be first killer where he does all the scoring. Not the case. It's Typical who has been the catalyst offensively for FaZe Clan in this Winter Cup. Oh! And he almost added a second goal for FaZe Clan. The shot from Typical. Yeah, a lot of people were talking about that G2 series from FaZe saying that, you know, they were playing a little bit more defensively, kind of in their own back half. So it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if Simple goes out in front. Here's first killer, though, looking for that top right corner, not able to find it. And GG Mobile One kind of struggling in terms of getting really any offense going. They haven't had a single shot this game. FaZe Clan has been dictating the pace. 
Apparently Jack stuffed by first killer as FaZe Clan continues to apply the pressure to the reigning and defending regional champs. Ooh, and Nolly coming across to make one save. Chronic making another. Typical lobbing another to the backboard and Nolly's got this. Everybody on deck defensively for Gen G, but they're not able to move very far forward. Jack had missed behind him. Miss trying to bounce one in here. That one saved and apparently Jack there to dismiss Zipical's follow-up effort as well. And again, it remains only the one goal lead for FaZe Clan, but they continue to dump things right back into the into the Gen G half. First killer shot wide. Mist is over there. He'll clean it up, and it's 2-0. It's just full control here of the offense from FaZe. Look at that great setup from Mist as well. Oh, missed the shot, first killer, don't worry. Turns it on a dime and places it in. So much offense here from FaZe that even when there's a lap there, Chronic even hesitated to go for a ball and challenge it. Just kind of showing that, you know, Gen G right now have been so used to playing defense that they've been playing reactionary to FaZe Clan rather than setting the tone. You finally see something there from Jack, but typical was set in net. Here comes the counter from FaZe off the crossbar, but Miss isn't going to take the shot. Chance for Jack, looking for the double, and it's good! Jack bringing this game within one. This starts right at the back with that demolition. Nobody's going to be able to get back in time for FaZe. Nolly up ahead to Jack. Wide open, double tap, does not miss. Inside two minutes, Genji, almost like they needed to give up that goal just to get a kickoff and reset things because FaZe was not letting them out of the zone. And now they've got another. Nolly up ahead for Chronic. And he's quickly onto this from the corner, but missed and first killer will clear the zone. Jack's got to get a hand up and oh! does, but it's not enough. First killer lands the double. You cannot make a mistake here against first killer. So quick to get downfield, uses all his boost. That is a tight angle for the double. Straight down and into the lower right corner. And FaZe Clan making a statement here against Gen.G. First killer is just faster right now. As apparently Jack got around him, but there is typical. He's got missed all the way across, going head hunting. Couldn't take out Nolly. Now first killer. Right at Nolly again, and still some trouble in front of the Gen G net, as it is all chaos right now. The one thing about Gen G, look, they've been outclassed in games in this stretch. His first killer will add another, but they usually recover. They recover better than anybody else, it seems like, from game to game because they're honest with themselves and they're able to analyze their mistakes, and nobody gets offended if somebody gets called out. That's exactly what, what Genji Mobile One are going to need to as well, is like being able to have that kind of conversation. Because right now you can tell stunned by the amount of just offensive firepower FaZe Clan is pushing out. And also the way they're finding each other. You saw that from First Killer, that even that little pass to miss. And the way even typical with the fake and the other goal was fantastic. Jack's going to make this within two, not necessarily, meaning Genji Mobile One. There's a chance here for them to come back, but you're going to look at that clock a minute, two seconds left as Jack put a great shot into that top right corner. He's got both goals for Gen G. That matches a pair from First Killer and a pair from Myth. That's the difference right now. Nolly on the kickoff almost made it real interesting going into the final minute. That win from Myth makes the task even tougher for Gen G. First killer almost maybe put it away. But now Nolly with Chronic already in the air and not able to get on the other end of whatever Nolly was going for and missed back the other way. Back goes Gen G to their own half with about 30 seconds left. But that's that's kind of the danger of Gen G, right? It's difficult rolls one in, and that should just about put game one away. Yeah, this one from Chronic. He's looking for the ground pinch. That's a strong challenge out of typical. Kept the ball low and close, and then able to sink that follow-up in. Going back to the that play from Noli and Chronic, I what I en enjoyed from it was the fact that he they were able to bring out so many members of FaZe Clan, and Noli saw that while in the air, oh, FaZe have his read on this. I might as well just make this a solo play to try to throw things off. Good idea, but not good enough. This FaZe Clan team has been set so far and they've been able to not only match the speed from Genji Mobile One, but increase the, 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 the demand of more, again, just matching with them toe to toe. If you're too slow, FaZe Clan have shown that they'll take full advantage of it. As the clock ticks down, game one, all in favor of FaZe as 
This series is just getting started, Stax. We are going to be in for a wild ride. That phase plan makes a statement in game number one. Wow. Absolutely dominate the Gen G squad that has just run roughshod over North America over the past several months. But again, we keep coming back to it's one game. And even though wow. it is only one game, we're getting a timeout. It was just like that, that Gen G wants a TO after a 5-2 loss in game one. I can't think of any series yeah, where I've seen know. a timeout after game one. Yeah, I don't know what what what's going on with that, but yeah, this is this is definitely something unexpected here. You see Jack already getting the kind of the conversations going, everybody's kind of talking things out. And I think it really did. You, you could see it, right? There's just that level of dominance FaZe Clan had in that opening, uh, opening couple of minutes at least. It was, you know, it made people like, uh, you can see Corelli on the desk, that confidence pick in FaZe Clan was showing. And I think for Gingy Mobile One, they had, they're just trying to shut things down immediately and reset the pace as quickly as possible before things get too out of control. I'm really interested in seeing how this timeout works for them. Well, our statistician, d who is just the absolute goat behind the scenes for us, he's got data on about over 300 timeouts called throughout the RLCS. This is only the second one he's got after game one. As we look back at a dominant performance, especially at a first killer and missed. Miss got it started with a couple of goals. First killer brought them across the finish line at the end. And then Sipical added one as well. He had a goal and an assist. A lot of confidence over there on the side of first killer and phase clan. And rightfully so after they have that long layoff, right? You know, they played the first semifinal and then you worry about how hot is a team like Genji going to be coming in, playing back to back, playing that second semi. Nah, they extinguished that flame real quick. They did, and it shows you that they can, what level of gameplay they can bring to the table at a moment's notice. And I think that that's going to be something that Jinji really have to speak about because how do you stop a team that's hot like that? I mean, even First Killer, we, they already gave him assist of the week after the last series because they were just playing on another level. Genji Mobile One has to match that level. They have to surpass it if they want to win this grand finals. This FaZe Clan is hungry and they're showing it on the field. Oh, what adjustments will Gen G make with that long timeout? That's oh. the adjustment Nolly shot sent away by First Killer. So they're on the attack early on here. This Mist will pop one away. Nolly over to Chronic. They're being very patient now. Chronic trying to play through the back wall. typical has got it red. Apparently, Jack doesn't have anybody to follow this play up. Typical and First Killer run into each other. Here goes Chronic. Flip reset, brought to ground, and still saved away by Mist and then by Typical. Here comes First Killer. It's almost fitting that he would score, but he's blocked by Nolly. I mean, the great, the, the defensive stop there from FaZe was incredible. They literally put a wall up in front of the net and didn't allow anything through. The touches were solid, and now they're looking to see if they can make something happen here on the counterattack. That was a very strong stretch, though, of offense from Genji Mobile One at the start, but not necessarily enough as we are still scoreless. They put on about five shots there, though, Stacks. It's the game within the game that gets played over these long best of seven series. As Mist will play it out to the side. You've got to be oh. ready mentally. What a save by first killer, sending that off the crossbar. And then apparently Jack leaving this one for Chronic off the challenge. And his shot denied by first killer. Already a savior medal for him as FaZe Clan continue to stifle the Gen G attack. You knew that Gen G was going to bring the house at you. You knew that they were going to try something else. And you've got to be focused early, early on in that game because that's when they're most likely to break out what they've got up their sleeve. FaZe have weathered the storm. And now we kind of reset into kind of a normal game, which based on game one, greatly favors FaZe Clan. Yeah. FaZe Clan have been, I mean, you can see exactly what First Killer was talking about with that team environment, that team play. It's there. And the selflessness has been solid. But this one has still been 0-0 in the first couple of minutes. Definitely a different Gen G than we saw from game one. 
They've been able to match with the speed here and honestly put FaZe Clan in some really tough spots. You could almost make a montage out of all the saves FaZe have made this game. We hit that halfway point though, still scoreless. Chronic has Nolly down on the ground. That didn't go nearly as far as Chronic would have liked. And apparently Jack with a full tank of boost. Having a tough time getting this quickly out of the zone. Needed Nolly's help. But first killer's got this. So he almost let that get away. And then goes right through Chronic. And after all that, no problem at all for FaZe Clan as they clear the zone again. Still scoreless here past the midway mark of game two after a 5-2 victory in game one. That if you're just joining us, Gen G have already burned their timeout. Nolly plays one downfield off the double and typical right to first killer. I mean, we're seeing something out of FaZe Clan too that we just have not seen in previous seasons since they joined the RLCS. Yeah. They have a very, very strong defensive squad, only allowing 1.15 goals per game. That's what First Killer's averaging scoring himself right now. <laughs> and, I did, and that's why it's been so tough for them to be beaten so far in this tournament. Here's First Killer looking for the bump on Noli, but Noli, great awareness. He leaves this one up, leaves it for Jag. Jag got the flip reset, but it's missed in the net. He's gonna stop that out. Gives it to First Killer, who's trying to lead the charge here. FaZe Clan have been able to really get solid on that transition game. And this transition game was a big reason why they beat G2. This time though, it's not working as well as because Gen G has been able to, I mean, you have Noli in that back line and the awareness has been phenomenal and everybody else has been able to ask to kill that face pressure and turn things around right now. We're going to the final minute though, and no goal has been scored in game two. Oh, that's a good win by Nolly. He's got apparently Jack coming in as well. Nolly trying to get in Mist's way, and it just did not work out for Gen G that time either. Chronic to the corner, typical as it read. Mist waiting very patiently in the net. That's kind of his home away from home. Typical now, float one up and Mist. Oh, kind of Nolly's waiting. There. Here goes Nolly with first killer tracking defensively, making the save with 30 seconds left. Miss bots that one away, and first killer makes sure Chronic doesn't have the rebound. Oh, apparently Jack now opportunity, and Zipical jumps in his way as well. FaZe Clan scrambling, but it does not yield anything for Gen G. That was almost awkward on the blue half. Here goes Zipical, 10 seconds. First killer to his left. Can't get onto this one for a second touch. And we seem earmarked for overtime, unless Gen G have some last second heroic. Ball bounces one more time. First killer will let it go. We go to overtime. Yeah, that was, it was smart on FK to let that go. But more defensively than offensive has been phased this game. And definitely the same for the for Gen G on the other side. But this one has been so close. You're not really seeing it because it's been off ball, but there's been so many close chances in terms of demos being made, in terms of boost deals. Everybody is looking for that mistake. Everyone is trying to force an error here, but they've been just off the mark. That's how aware everyone has been on the field. Apparently Jack grabbing that boost away from Miss. This will be high off the challenge from Chronic. And first killer, you got a second touch on this. They got around apparently Jack. Now typical needs one to get around Chronic. He's got it. And it's missed who just couldn't get on top of that shot. First yeah. killer, tough angle. At least try to keep this available. But Chronic will have it away. No harm, no foul for Gen G. But now they got to worry about typical missed lurking as well. He's coming up now to challenge Chronic. First killer in the air, looking for the double. No, he's left it for typical and it goes off of Miss. Another oh. opportunity saved by Nolly. Give him a medal as that goes off to the corner. FaZe Clan really let one go by the wayside when maybe they should have had a cleaner look. Yeah, now Chronic starting that counterattack. Gets it past one, gets it out into the middle. Noli far back. You would think FaZe Clan were coming up with a scoring opportunity there, but unfortunately for them, it doesn't go the way they want. Miss up uh, taking the hit on that. And oh, Noli wanted to stretch for that. Gen G now having the office, but only for a moment. As typical, got that right to first kill on a dime. Almost got that double out. They're trading back and forth attacks up the field. Oh, typical has got to be sure-handed here. That's oh. a good win by Jack to at least get a piece of it. Now typical trying to break out with first killer. Missed in behind him. And apparently Jack again back out to midfield. Both teams have had plenty of near misses in the first couple of minutes of overtime. And every time first killer's on the ball in the air, you kind of get to the edge of your seat and wonder what else does he have up his sleeve. 
I, I mean, difficult again trying to get one through. And he, he's had some good wins. They're pushing the ball deep into the oh, zone, oh. Daz, but just not able to get the shot on that they need. This game is so close. I, I, if a dibble happens, I'm at the edge of my seat. Because <laughs> that, that leads to so many chances. Kranich tried to get that into the top corner and got knocked out. Even for that challenge there from Noel, he last back, he misses that, it's game, but it might be game here. Chronic pops it up. Jack wants to get the follow-up. No, even after Noel got the demo, Gen G couldn't capitalize. Ball's still in the midfield. Miss has free reign to control this as he's trying to play it up off the backboard. One thing that makes Gen G more dangerous than probably any other team in the world is their teamwork and that extra pass. Faze is ready for it. it Kind of surprises a lot of teams and when they lose that element of surprise, Gen G looks mortal at times. It's chronic, right at first killer. He's gonna try and dive bomb down onto it, but Jack has fended him off. And it's Chronic coming up now to play around Miss. That's a great indirect oh. pass for apparently Jack, who's whiffed on it, and it leaves Nolly in an awkward spot, and the bank is just oh, off the mark. Typical for the win, far down and in, and FaZe Clan is up 2-0. It was disaster on both sides for a moment. First killer missing the touch, threw off everyone. But Typical, who's had a fantastic tournament so far, comes in clutch and scores that goal to end the game. Big win here for FaZe Clan. You got to think, Jinji called that timeout game one to slow things down. This game goes into overtime, back and forth, so many chances here, and we played eight minutes of straight Rocket League, and FaZe Clan able to come out on top. That's going to be a great spot for them to be in. Feels like FaZe Clan took Genji's best shot over and over and over again. The better part of the 12 shots that Genji threw at him and repelled them every single time. Nine saves, many very acrobatic, had to be right on top of their game to stop Gen G with a very clever attack more often than not. Just not enough. And now FaZe Clan up 2-0 in the series. There is no timeout available now for Gen G. They burned that after game one and it did not yield any different results other than it took them a little bit longer to drop the second game. And there's the architect there for FaZe Clan. Roll Diz, got him up 2-0. Now we go to the iconic backdrop of DF8 Stadium as FaZe Clan looks to reach match point against the dominant reign of Gen G. And what do you do if you're Gen G Mobile One? You end up losing that game after calling your timeout. How do you get back into it when it seems like they're not allowing you to score at all. I say that, but that floats in from Chronic top left. And for the first time, we have Gen.G starting it off. Yeah, they've got their first lead here in this grand final. Just a little teardrop from Chronic finding its way in. And is that the spark that Gen.G Mobile One Racing needs to get right back into this series? We'll find out. His first killer gets swatted out of the air by Chronic. And apparently Jack will have Nolly waiting to try and follow up this play. Around missed, but right at first killer. And FaZe Clan unable to clear the zone. Wide open net, Chronic does it again. There goes the demos. Opening that lane in the back end is Nolly able to take Sip out the play. Open look at the net. And Gen G has not had these opportunities all series long. You give Chronic a shot like that, he's gonna make it every time. The Beast has been awakened. Less than 40 seconds gone by in game three. Gen G finally here to play. First killer around Chronic. Chronic's gonna have to get back up the touch to disrupt Sipical's follow up. And who's gonna have this? It's Mist and Nolly. 50 50. First killer up to the backboard here. Sipical oh. tried to thread the needle. And apparently Jack with a great reflex save. I mean, that's a great play. A lot of people would have expected first killer to come in, but it's Sip again, who's been putting on the shot pressure as he banks this goal in for FaZe. Pitch out to the middle. No one home to read that and bar down and in. Typical makes this a one goal game for FaZe Clan. Typical has been oh so reliable, especially here in the Winter Cup for FaZe Clan. They certainly would not be here without him, as apparently Jack will play this off to the wing. And Mist is tracking this. He'll have it easily. The demolition by 
First killer taking out Nolly behind the play. First killer's got to range back and get this to Sipical, but it's given away. And Chronic, maybe the last guy FaZe Clan wants to see with the ball, is he's been the spark for Gen G so far. At least they repel that effort. And Sipical has this save, easy as it is. Good control here for first. Places into the corner. You see Jack going by to try to grab it. He's going to get sent way across. Chronic puts that back into the blue half. Jack looking to find Noli. Noli, though, that's a great challenge in the corner. And FaZe Clan kind of all into the corner right now, able to kind of clear the way. You see a demo come out for first killer. Everybody, you have to keep an eye on everyone on the field because with both of these teams looking out for that extra pass, looking to see, okay, there doesn't need to be a single guy who leads the charge here for either side. I mean, it just makes really good Rocket League. The challenge by Mist to bring this back to exactly the center dot in the air. Chronic to apparently Jack. Nolly trying to run interference underneath. Not a big enough distraction. What a read by Chronic. That's going to drop down for apparently Jack and just nobody opting to go for that ball. Maybe Jack thought Chronic had another play. Either way, the communication breaks down for Gen G and FaZe Clan are let off the hook. Can they find an equalizer because of it? Oh, yes, they can! Sipical up high and down hard. Look at Sipic up. Going through, gets the double. Been playing out of this world for FaZe Clan. People put their eyes on first killer, but what happens when first killer passes the ball? You're looking at it right now. What? What a performance. No matter what happens, you got to give Sip credit here. I mean, the, the work that he's been able to do once he's been, you know, fed the ball has been just stellar. Missed down to ground, but Nolly with the win. Apparently Jack trying to leave this for Chronic, looking for a hat trick. Not happening, and Nolly's shot saved by Mist. Got to be a lot more creative to beat Mist one-on-one -on -one from that range. Nolly with a full tank of boost. He'll try and turn things around again for Gen G. Lost it, but Chronic will pick up the pieces. Apparently, Jack again couldn't get any contact going along the back line. What can Nolly do? Burning a lot of boost. He'll set up Jack. There's a shot that gets by Sipical, and Gen G are back on top. You better not sleep on Gen G, no matter what the score line's looking like, because that man Jack, perfect shot. It doesn't get much more perfect than that. Top left corner, Noli with a great assist. Gen G Mobile One regained the lead with a minute 30 left. Typical will start it from the back line again with Miss diving down a high hopper that Nolly's got to get up to the backboard for. First killer just waiting for an opportunity to make his mark on this series again. Missed on target. First killer trying to get in the way of apparently Jack. It goes all the way over to Nolly. Oh, what a good stop by Miss again. Just pestering Gen G at the midfield. Difficult shot, no. Follow up from Mist finds its way through. And in the final minute, it's FaZe delivering a haymaker of their own. Shot after shot. This, these two teams been trading blows. Jack, you thought Jack was going to get there first, but when you look at the replay, I think that was first killer right under him, making him awkward. And just like that, it's anybody's game. That ends a stretch of four straight FaZe Clan goals that were scored by Sipical in this series. It's now Chronic. Stopped by Mist again. Only got a piece of this. And apparently Jack, can he stay with this play? He certainly can. Chronic up the ladder, but Mist is there first. And away it goes. Another overtime hanging in the balance, perhaps. As Nolly, that goes off a first killer and Mist there to pounce on it. Very fortunate were Gen G not to get scored on there. Off the backboard again, loose ball, first killer swatted away by apparently Jack. Jack looking for a little bit of control. That's gonna be a good clear from Chronic to be able to buy Gen G some space. But they are gonna try to play this down to the last seconds. Noli straight down for Jack. Jack tries to go low, and here comes the first killer. Can they get the counter to end the game? The shot comes through. Saved off the corner. It's going to pinch all the way downfield, and Miss will let that hit the ground. Another overtime. Game three. FaZe Clan win this. It goes to match point. Almost any other team with Nolly up there in that position is probably going for some crazy redirect down to try and put one on target. 
FaZe Clan understands Genji is always going to make that extra pass, and they're not fooled by it one bit. Able to clear out very quickly. Now missed. Beats apparently Jack. Nolly's only skied it up. He's got to clean up his own mess, and he will, with nobody from FaZe Clan diving in immediately. First killer trying to get in, in the way of Noli. Noli's out of boost, so tries to hand that off to Chronic. Light touch from Sypical, but Jack should be able to take control. Gets buffed on the way up, though, and has to try the 51st killer in the corner. Chance here for Noli going off the ceiling, trying to get that flip out, and no one able to follow up. So here comes Sypical trying to lead the charge for FaZe Clan. Still more pressure, though. It's FaZe Clan is still looking a little uncomfortable at the start of this overtime. Zipical going to work again, and apparently Jack with another Savior Medal to send that one off the backboard. Chronic around first killer. It'll only be Zipical at the back, no problem for FaZe. Nolly didn't have it the first time around, and Zipical bounced it just a little too high. Gen G use yet another one of their lives, and that one goes wide from Mist. FaZe continues to pour it on. First killer trying to chase Nolly away from the net, but Chronic is there, and he'll pop that away. The demo from Sypical may matter. Mist got the oh, win, oh, oh, oh. and Chronic will just recover in time. What a duck there for Mist. That one looked like it was rolling in. A lot of defense here being played on the blue side. A space given, and that could prove fatal for FaZe Clan. Here comes the pet play out. There was a demo, or almost a demo on the play. Noli was going for one. Now FaZe Clan able to relieve the pressure, and they tried to get a strong counter. Mist was up so early for that, but it wasn't enough. Chronic given a rare bit of time and space to work with, and he kind of gave the ball away. First killer bringing it back central. Nolly repels as Miss thought about the midfield boost and said he'll go for the shot instead. That forces Chronic to make the save. Gave up that boost to typical in midfield, and now he's up the ladder. Needs a second touch. Nope, left it for Miss. And that's just left a bit to be desired. Maybe try to create a juicy rebound. That didn't quite happen. But Gen G still scrambling defensively. Chronic taking his time, trying to get around first killer. They're waiting for that corner boost to spawn. Now it's typical, met by apparently Jack. And that falls right to Noli, who can clear the center line finally. Only for a moment, though, as Mist will bring it back in. We played almost, or we played more oh. than half an extra game, and still no give at three all. No one giving up here. Gen G's defense has been solid. As they finally are able to clear it in space, the problem was they just struggled to get past that midfield line. The phase plan had so much control there in terms of just getting that consistent offensive pressure. But now, GG Mobile One with some room out in front. But how long can they hold on to it? They got to make something happen. Phase Clan's defense has been just as strong as their offense this series as a chance here for another transition comes. How big would this be for FaZe Clan to take two lengthy overtimes to get on match point in a best of seven? Nolly ranging just to get a piece of this ball, and apparently Jack ahead of Sypical, but he's going to be way downfield. First killer set him up, and he couldn't continue the play. That's well defended by Jack and Gen G. And look at that read, too. Just knowing that Jack's going to get the pass there. Uh-oh, danger! Sypical is up in the air! The star strikes again! First killer gets that high, steps there to reach it, and slams it home! FaZe Clan put this series on match point! Five of the last six FaZe Clan goals have come from that man, Zipical, who adds a hat trick to his tally in game three. Three goals for Sip, three wins for FaZe Clan, trying to turn North America on its head. And what do you do if you're on the side of Gen G Mobile One? You've already used the timeout well, in yeah, game Yeah, I was going to say, you call a timeout. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, not that's not the case anymore. This has been close, though. That, by, I mean, as close as it can be. Yeah. Three, the last two games, back-to-back, -back, three plus minute overtimes here. And... It just feels like when it comes down to it, that phase pressure and, and the way that they've been performing has been just such, it's just been on such a high level that for Genji Mobile, when they get caught in this defensive trap and they end up playing towards phase speed, they're not fast enough. It's been, that's just been clearly shown in some of these goals that we've seen, but it's not 
over yet. Game four, Kanjin G Mobile One. Start a reverse sweep here against FaZe Clan is the question. Or is FaZe Clan gonna take this series in a sweep? It's almost like they're in their comms. That fake kickoff's probably the first time FaZe Clan has even been remotely surprised by anything that Gen G has thrown at them. And even then, it didn't really amount to much. We go to Utopia for game four and FaZe Clan five minutes away or maybe eight or nine or however many minutes it takes if they go to another overtime from sweeping Gen G as Sipical continues his absolute dominance in this series. Look at the setup for Miss First killer also with a bump on the play. Chronic, there was just no chance. No chance for a play there after first killer getting that bump down. And just like that, FaZe picked things up and put the pressure on Gen G. Zipical came in with 22 assists to lead everybody in the tournament, averaging just over one a game. He had only scored 10 times himself. He's got six in just over three games here in the final. Nolly, oh, a second touch at least gave his defense a chance and missed. Oh, he hit the crossbar and could not follow it up. Still more phase possession. This time, first killer, the threat of the pass was there, but decided to go slow, trying to mix things up there. It almost worked out. The Gen G was set. Now demo on the other side. As Noli takes out one, open lane for Jack, and Jack gets on the board. We got a tied up game. Yeah, missed. Doing all he could to just kind of hang in there. Unfortunately, didn't get much air under this ball. So apparently Jack able to follow up the play. The demolition certainly didn't help matters any. Nobody back for FaZe Clan. We're all tied up here in game four. Gen G are going to have to scratch and claw their way back into this series step by step. And they have no more room for error. Meanwhile, all the confidence on the side of FaZe Clan. And this is what we'll really see is this Gen G roster tested. Because FaZe Clan opened up this series and said, this is the level we're going to bring to the table. You can either match it or you can get out of our way. And Gingy on the last leg here. Well, Mist will power this downfield. Apparently, Jacko, he dished it off to the corner where First Killer was waiting the whole time. But now Chronic up ahead where Nolly's streaking down the field. Apparently, Jack starting to head towards the corner, but wisely peeled away. Nolly's waiting to see what Jack's got. Drop it down. Nolly's shot. High and wide. Follow up is saved by Mist. There's Chronic. Chronic follow up, oh. and that one's saved too. Oh, I tell you what, FaZe Clan right now, they've, they've seen it all a second and a half in advance. It's crazy. We have not seen a team shut down Gen G quite like this. Yeah, I mean, even for Mist there, that first save was phenomenal. Can they stop Jack here on the double two go up on that? And now Noli playing it off the backboard, setting up a lane for Chronic, but sends it right to Mist. And you have, again, some of these shots that we're seeing out of Gen G, they have to be a little bit better. There's two that's been, the last two have been straight in terms of the middle of the net, making it so that face clean don't necessarily have to do too much work here. Better placement could yield to, yield to better results, but first you gotta stop the transition, and Noli does stop in first killer shot. Noli's giving Gen G a chance. Trying to get him downfield now. Two go for FaZe, opportunity for Gen G. Chronic, decent first Got touch, better second, and first killer still finds a way to shut him down in the air. Nolly's second touch leaves that ball for nobody in particular. Apparently Jack being chased Ooh. by first killer, but he couldn't get to this coming off the wall. Getting a little ugly now with just over 90 seconds remaining in regulation. Another overtime perhaps, as typical, blocked by Nolly. And apparently Jack trying to fool first killer They've had to get creative oh, this and maybe a little oh. bit desperate. Chronic just barely avoided contact on the way back. Typical did get a piece of Chronic, but it actually kind of helped him recover a little bit. So then Chronic was able to go in and honestly make that save out. Fair play there, though, for FaZe Clan. Again, sending someone downfield, looking for the bumps on the last man back, trying to throw things off as much as possible. Can first killer give FaZe the lead? Demo on the play. Typical had to follow, but blocked out. Noli will get credited with the save. We're approaching the final minute here, and Jack trying to turn things around here for Gen G. They have the ball on the offense, but they have not been super successful this game. 
so many shots. They've sent seven, but they've only scored one. Uh, that was a bold challenge by apparently Jack in midfield. Last man, but he made it. Just dropped right down to first killer from the ceiling. Still tied up here with now 30 seconds remaining. Apparently Jack has Nolly wide right. That got around missed. Jack rolled it home and first killer recovers for the save that saves game four. Keeps us tied and now missed. Flexing his muscles through two. Nolly, last boss, makes the stop. Then downfield into an open net with only eight seconds remaining. Genji not done yet. Look at this breakout from Nolly. Catches them out and puts it home. He has the read. Now they have to hold off for eight seconds. What does FaZe Clan have up their sleeve? It's typical who taken out by Nolly. That goes over first. Typical spawns right under the ball as it goes over his head. And now FaZe Clan have to go all the way downfield. Apparently Jack will catch this and should be able to bring it to ground. And he does with a little bit of help from his friends. And Gen G stay alive. One down, three more to go. There will be no sweep in this grand final. I say that, but there may be a chance for a reverse sweep. Gen G Mobile One battle back here and FaZe Clan are the ones that come up empty, pulling so consistently up until this point. And that's got to be scary for FaZe here as well because you had Jin G. I mean, no timeouts. You came through one, two big overtimes. Momentum is strongly in your favor here. That being said, they could not convert anymore. And we play on. We do play on that man, Nolly, the hero in game four in many, many ways. Yep. He only credited with a couple of saves, but he had some great defensive efforts that shut down FaZe Clan throughout that game. And he scored his first goal of the series, the game winner, with only eight seconds remaining. And now the attention starts to shift maybe a little bit over towards FaZe Clan. Remember, they hold all the cards, right? The 3-0 lead to start this series. They still have their timeout in their pocket. When do they use it? Do they use it here after game five if Gen G make this a little more interesting? We'll have to wait until we're done with Wasteland to find out. Game five, another closeout opportunity for FaZe Clan trying to take down Gen G. They've been the only team that's done it in a final. Can they do it again? I'm sure there's been someone out there who thought this one was over, said, okay, we can pack it up. Day, glad this was a short day, but the games are still going, so keep it locked in. What is FaZe Clan going to do as an adjustment here? Can Jin G continue that same output? Here's Mist on the ball, trying to get it around Chronic. I mean, that win neutralizes so much in terms of the direction that this series was going, and Wasteland will be a big factor in how things shift. It commands a little bit of extra respect, too, for what Gen G is capable of, because everybody knows they can rally from almost nothing. This oh, shot oh. finds its way in! Chronic from out of nowhere! Top left! Look at this, sent over to the side, you see first killer, he wants a piece of it. Pinch to the top left corner. Chronic says thanks for the assist. Gen G with the lead here to start. Plenty of game to go though. And let me just paraphrase what every FaZe Clan fan is thinking right now. Uh-oh. Here goes Chronic. He's dancing around first killer, but first he's got that right back to Sipical. Good recovery. Now Chronic shadowing Sip. And first killer playing that one around the side. Typical waiting for a pass from first killer. Maybe a rebound. Oh! oh, first killer couldn't get it to go. It looked like he had it all the way, but it just stays out. And then typicals missed this With opportunity for Gen G as apparently Jack tried to serve it up for Chronic. There's Nolly, and apparently Jack couldn't direct that pass. Miss. Oh man, Miss Savior there. That was almost guaranteed, but missed that speed. Phenomenal. Another chance for a pass. Noli got a piece of it, but didn't really, it wasn't able to redirect it. Chronic follow-up is in. And GG now on a two-goal run. Remember all that nonsense from earlier in the series about how Gen G just kind of outthinks their opponent? They outfox them. 
They're outmaneuvering them now and simply outplaying FaZe Clan. Got a couple quick ones to start game five. And the comeback starting to look a little bit more realistic and the pressure mounts on FaZe Clan with every attack. Miss couldn't get by Nolly, who again comes up with a brilliant defensive stop. Apparently Jack will bring this from the backboard and He's going to get around first killer and typical, and that's a great defensive stand again wow. by Faze, uh, by Gen wow. G. Then they've turned it into offense. Apparently, Jack credited from that effort by Chronic. Oh my goodness, this was incredible. You can see Sip was trying to get that demo on Noli. The pass to Chronic. Chronic basically scores this goal. Jack will take it though. I mean, what a transition. These guys are matching with the speed and the ability to move the ball around the field. GG Mobile One up by three here with three minutes left. Even on FaZe's strongest ability to drive there that game, they still came up empty. And look at apparently Jack just going right through the whole face clan defense until he gets stopped right at the end. First killer lets one rip and it hits the crossbar. Murphy's Law starting to be enforced here. If it can go wrong, it will, and it is right now for FaZe. Jack playing this slow, and now the question is for FaZe Clan, what does the resolve look like? Can they still continue to play this play style and find each other, or will we start to see a bit of tunnel visioning? Is this one in the corner? Noli puts it in the midfield. Sip is there to read it, lining up the double. Misses. No, first killer not in position for a follow. Miss will play this high, trying to force an error. But Chronic is up to meet it. First killer is doing donuts in the midfield. Finally there to take a shot. Miss looking for the follow, but Noli stretch save to deny. And Gen G send it the other way. They put a lid on it right now. Just cannot find a hole to shoot through. Now first killer, just play that to the back wall and apparently Jack's got it all the way. Inside two minutes with Gen G turning Chronic things up. around. Chronic double on target, but first killer saves it away. Save your medal for him. This one won't be saved as Nolly got it to apparently Jack. He'll slam it home on the doorstep and Gen G have completely flipped the script. Oh, yes, they have. This is straight dominance here in game five. Everything FaZe has thrown at them with their seven shots has been denied and matched with just even more power from Gen G right now. And <laughs> like I said, if you tuned out after game three, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out what happened. And this is just, again, this Gen G squad do not give up and they're showing you why you shouldn't count them out early. Maybe they got word that the first three games weren't, in fact, a test lobby. Apparently, Jack couldn't get to this. First killer just barely cleared it away. Chronic now to the backboard. Mist is there. Doesn't matter. Nolly adds another. It is six unanswered goals right now from Gen G. The momentum is showing here. Look at that block there, a miss from Chronic. That makes me super awkward. Can't get that power to get the save out and sets up a lane for Noli. Everybody on Gen G Mobile One getting the goals here in game five. And at this point, we're looking at Neo Tokyo next. Oh my goodness, Chronic adds another. Look, as big a beating as FaZe delivered in game one, at least Gen G scored. At least they got up off the mat and kept fighting. This right now is as big a laydown as we've seen. Chronic adding another, his fifth yep. goal of the series. Six nil to Gen G. And the, one of the biggest factors to look at this is typical. He's got 72 points, only one shot this game. It's as if they've just shut him completely down here when he did so much work in those opening games for FaZe Clan. 30 seconds left, typical and first killer both in the air, and you, you wonder now if we're having a situation like what we saw in Europe with Team Liquid, where they got blown out and they decided not to take a timeout. Will we see something different here as the clock ticks down, and we know game six is on the horizon. And yeah, we know we'll go to at least Neo Tokyo. I'd like to think Raul is considerably smarter than that, as Mist will circle around on one. They'll look for any consolation at all and find absolutely none. Nolly just gives them a little bit of mercy, not going for a seventh goal. And Gen G brings it all the way back, two in a row. And we do have confirmation 
Raul and Faze are calling the T.O. They had it in their back pocket in case they needed it. This is the time after dropping two. This one in particular, really hurtful for FaZe Clan to drop. Yeah, it's really hurtful. And even though the timeout is called, it still adds onto the momentum of Gen G because yep. now they know, oh, we got them. We picked them apart, we figured them out, and now they're trying to slow us down because they know the potential of what really what's going on if they let this continue. For this FaZe Clan team, again, that last game didn't necessarily show the team play that we saw in the earlier ones. And you can see where things kind of started to struggle, uh, especially on some of those counterattacks from Genji Mobile One. We're all really, I mean, in order to make sure this doesn't get out of hand here, it's a big time out. And this is a FaZe Clan team that has benefited multiple times from his guidance, most probably most recently and most famously with the match with Oxygen at the Rotterdam Major. Able to turn that series around with Roll Diz calling the shots. He's got to engineer another turnaround here because Gen G holds all the momentum. Seven unanswered goals going back to the game winner from Nolly in game four. And we look back now at the Gen G highlight reel. We saw one from FaZe Clan after game one. But this one, 100% reigning champs, Gen G. Yeah, then they sit there now, making sure not to, you know, still making sure to still communicate here during this time. But even some smiles coming out there from Malu as they are down in this series. But they know that with that timeout being forced, okay, we have some weight here. They cannot lose anymore. No, no, no lives, no timeouts. It's just straight Rocket League from this point on. This has happened before to FaZe Clan in a best of seven. It was the second time in the same event that we saw a North American BO7 reverse sweep. And it was typical shot that died on the goal line on Champions Field that secured it. Will it happen again? Five more minutes. Neo Tokyo the backdrop as we kick off game six. What else does Chronic have up his sleeve? He got things started for Gen G in game five. Trying to do it again in six, and he has the young one in Chronic getting this touch out. Typical tries to go up, but he didn't expect that last second touch out from Chronic. And Gen G pick up where they left off. First goal of the game. One thing that goes in favor of FaZe Clan, despite that opening goal, we'll get to it in a moment, as Nolly's got a big win here. Chronic, it is just wide on an open net. Apparently Jack doubled. Still not a whole lot of resistance, but it was slow enough. Zipical recovers. Teams that use their timeout in that exact situation that FaZe Clan just did, they do still win 13 out of 15 times. That timeout while up 3-2. So they've got at least that going for them historically. But the stats don't matter if you don't make it matter. And right now, Gen G is all over FaZe Clan. Big boom downfield. Noli's there to play it off the corner to Chronic. Chronic looking for another touch, but it's high. And Miss will clear away the danger. Oh, that's a big miss for Jeez. Jack. And punish for that miss says, thank you. You can see the frustration from Jack on the screen. Knows he should have had that one. A rare miscue out of Gen G and especially out of apparently Jack. And Mist will end the scoring drought at eight consecutive goals out of Gen G. Base Clan went on a similar stretch yesterday when they had scored nine in a row against the Knights. And apparently Jack will get it right back. There you go, and look at that, an immediate change there from Jack. They get this one quickly off the kickoff, great pinch from Chronic. Typical drove a little too high there, and Chronic snuck it right under him. Great speed from Jack to get to the ball. Gingy Mobile One take the lead again. That's typical on the kickoff that Chronic ultimately wins. Oh, here comes the And ball. he's a decoy, Nolly. Oh, happened? apparently Jack was behind him, and Nolly just could not make anything happen there, Gen G. Really let FaZe Clan off the hook. 
They're right back in their face as First Killer brings us through. Now Myth with First Killer running ahead, and First Killer will take the goal, and that's going to be his first since game one. This game has been messy, it's been scrappy, and it's given us almost everything here. Myth is off the corner. Gigi had a, a prime chance to strike and make it a two-goal lead. That miscommunication came through. FaZe took advantage of it. But by no means is anybody in control here. It is the Wild West of Neo Tokyo. So we go right back to square one. Just over three minutes remaining in regulation. First killer just throw one at the net. He couldn't follow that play. And Chronic now try to gather around. Missed. Only first killer to beat. Easier said than done. Oh, Noli's up with apparently Jack jumping as well. That could have been real dangerous for Gen G. A phase plan got a clean clear. Now Chronic back towards the net, and first killer following into his own net. Makes that save away. And Nolly can at least stay with this play and pester the FaZe Clan defense even more. As here comes Gen G looking for more offense. This is a little oh, typical. All way chance here. Typical does get bumped. Chronic tried to do it all himself. Noli up there to meet first killer. Did Chronic take the boost in the corner? He did. So still trying to keep that pressure. Goes off the ceiling here. But first killer will play into his own corner. This is really sloppy defense from FaZe Clan compared to what we've seen earlier this series. And Gen G's been doing their best to take advantage of it, but their offense hasn't been that good either because they have not been able to consistently follow up the ball. Well, Nolly and first killer ran into each other, and that was actually a boon for Nolly. He knocked him right back into the corner boost that he had left behind. And now Chronic waiting with a full tank right at midfield. He's going to go to work now, trying to get around Mist. First killer takes out apparently Jack. There will be no rebound opportunity. And now first killer right at Nolly. Nolly up to the task as he has been all night. Miss clears that out. Has to really no other options for space. But look at this. Jinji able to pick up the ball even quicker and send it way back into the other field. Now FaZe are just trying to get the ball out to buy them some space. But with that lack of control, they haven't been able to do much. Jack looking for a bump on Miss. Oh, got it past Miss, but typical there to cover up the mistake. Uh, Mist had to be patient too. He didn't know if apparently Jack was going to find a way onto that ball in the air. Is in a real awkward spot, but FaZe Clan tight rope their way out of danger. Now it's Chronic over on the side. Everything mattering so oh. much more now. Nolly shot on target, but Mist ranges over for the save. Apparently Jack will take this himself to the corner. He's got Chronic waiting. Oh. Shot barely off the mark, got his own rebound, and Mist is there to mark him the whole time. First killer, the save on Nolly. Now it's Chronic's turn to serve up apparently Jack, looking for maybe a game winner again here in the final minute. It's Chronic around and typical missed it, but Nolly couldn't hammer it home. Now they finally get some breathing room. Here come FaZe Clan on the other side of the field. It felt like Jinji had them in a chokehold, but things finally are able to settle down here. Chronic on the ball, leaves it for Jack. Jack with the shot, but missed. Great save out from him. 30 seconds remaining, and things, this ball is back on the orange half. FaZe have been playing defense for a majority of this game. They used the demos to try to get out space, but the offense from them has not been there. A chance here for something, but Jack able to knock it away in time. They're testing that backboard again. This time, Jack clears it to Noli. Uh-oh, typical on the ball. He could end it here. Plays it high, but not good enough for FaZe to set up any stimulus to offense. It's looking like we have another overtime on our hands as First Killer grounds this ball. Golden goal to avoid Champions Field for FaZe Clan. This goes deep into the FaZe end, however. It's Chronic. Swatted away by First Killer. Infield pass. Chronic, Nolly there. Nobody got a shot. Now apparently Jack. He'll let one rip, and we will head to Champs Field. FaZe Clan stunned on the goal line, and apparently Jack says we are not done yet! Top left corner goal! JG bring it back, and we are going the distance here in the grand finals! It looked oh so bleak after a couple of overtime winners out of FaZe Clan. And then all of a sudden, Chronic happened. He's got six goals in the series, a massive part of this comeback charge, but it's apparently Jack who gets back on the board. His eighth goal sends us to game seven in the grand finals of the Winter Cup.
And what more can this series deliver here? We've gotten dominant performances, early starts, qu strange questionable timeouts, sloppy play, excellent play. And you, we are going into this game seven and you can't tell me you know who's going to come out on top. A lot of very interested parties watching this series come to its conclusion. All the teams sitting behind FaZe Clan and even some that are sitting in front of them, like G2, who would fall behind FaZe if FaZe were to win this event. It has been a wild, emotional ride, and it comes to a head on Champions Field. FaZe Clan have dropped three straight games, including a timeout after a timeout that was historically in their favor. They have not been able to close this series out. And Gen G Mobile One has turned it on its head. They are leading in the start here on the offensive end. They've been leading in the last game or so that they've won. And for FaZe Clan, they, can, they are trying their best to not drop a 3-0 lead in the grand finals. Here we go. The, the great ones find a way, and Gen G has done exactly that. As Chronic will yield to apparently Jack. Mist is up there to meet him. And this will fall by the wayside. Mist just lob one downfield, try to keep Gen G honest. Noli's got it. And he will be met by Sipical. First killer and Chronic collide at midfield. It's first killer, the better of the two. He's left behind for Mist. He couldn't make the contact. And a missed opportunity for FaZe Clan. They'll get another chance. Oh. And apparently Jack and Chronic combined for the save. It's a great pass from Sip to Miss. And Miss tries to go low there. Reactions from Jin G, though, keeping them in the game here at the start. But FaZe Clan starting to find each other here on the assist. And keep an eye on Typical. If he comes alive, it could be what FaZe needs. Tries to turn on that. But Chronic will get the save. Miss. Up in the direction of first killer. Problem is, Chronic is an obstacle. Typical will try. That goes indirect for apparently Jack. One more touch needed to get some control, and he slipped it by first killer. Leave it for Chronic. Everybody's got to get back now for Gen G. That kicks out towards Chronic, and he had to pump the brakes for a moment. Now Typical, looking for an infield pass. He's found missed. No, he's found Nolly with a big clear and a brave effort that was. Jack Apparently Jack almost beat first killer and almost got the strike for Gen G. The theme of this split has been breakthrough and we've seen FaZe Clan do that with the four start and getting to the finals now. But Gen G are trying to break through in this series. Coming back from a 0-3 deficit in series score and halfway through this game seven, They've been matching each other. No one has been able to score on either side. Chronic will take charge from the back line. Midfield boost not there for him. Does not matter. Got the shot off. Oh, oh, oh. it's almost an own goal. Nully almost there on the doorstep as well. A lot of almost defensively from FaZe Clan, but they do at least keep Gen G out. Oh, so barely. Free ball here for Noli. Looking for Chronic. First killer Reddit though. Jack. We'll play this off to the side. Chronic will hit the ball again. We'll pick up that midfield boost and try to stay on it to slow things down, not letting FaZe Clan get those strong counterattacks we've seen them do before. It's only happened in a grand final one time last season in the APAC region, one of the APAC regions. Of course, now they're merged as difficult. Oh, got it apparently oh. Jack's way, and the distraction was enough. Mist will score, and is that the winner for FaZe? Pass out, leaves it up for Miss. He's gonna put that shot on, and Jack tried to get a piece of it. Wasn't enough. FaZe Clan lead here in game seven. Minute 40 to go in regulation. NG have been excellent on the kickoff, especially after conceding a goal. It happened even in game six with apparently Jack. That blunderous play, but he made up for it. But here's Miss adding another trying to finish the series the way he started it. Look at this, even with the turn in the challenge, FaZe Clan just matching that speed, misses the net open again, and it will hammer it home. Is this going to be how this finals ends? Gigi clawed their way back, 
and they haven't been able to come up with anything so far in Game 7. Have Gen G come all this way only to fumble the bag at the end. Typical makes it even tougher. Three on the trot out of FaZe Clan. And the hill gets higher and higher. Typical able to score on this one. Three to zero. A minute 19 here. FaZe Clan are not throwing this finals away. And does Gen G with a very unfavorable clock. Can they bring this back? It's gonna take a lot of river to keep Gen G afloat now. A minute five remaining. And FaZe Clan taking their sweet time before heading out towards midfield. Chronic stuffed by Mist. Nolly put the shot on. First kill of the save. And after all this, FaZe Clan clutching up at the end. Sipical puts the cherry on top. There's Sip again, and how fitting would it be? Gets the demo, gets the shot, and put what a lot of people are thinking right now is the nail in the coffin of this series. 4-0 the lead for FaZe Clan. After they had come oh so close to blowing a 3-0 lead. Chronic underneath, Nolly circling around. It is desperation now for Gen G. If they want to come back, they will not. Zipical ahead. First killer. It's wide. Zipical's on. Maybe Rocket Labar will get off his case. He's got another. <laughs> this one, look at this. First killer, great assist. Zip with the follow. It's a done deal. This FaZe Clan team has the resolve that even when they're pushed to their limits, things are working, they still stick together and they come out with a very big dominant, I'd say in the later half, game seven. They finally found their stride here and they found the back of the net. And on the other side of Gen G, a valiant effort to get back into this series, but they dropped it when they had it. Typical is gonna finish this series with at least nine goals. Maybe one more if Mist can find him. Instead, it comes to ground, and FaZe Clan have dethroned Gen G. Very well done from FaZe Clan, and congrats to them as well. Starting this split off, losing the M80 round one of the Open, and then coming back and not only playing phenomenally better, but the winner of this Winter Cup. Very well done. You can see it from, from Genji, you know, that frustration on Noli. Not happy, but at the end of the day, Jack, a little bit of smiles trying to cheer up the squad because again, they, you know, this back-to-back -back finals from them is just FaZe Clan. They, they were that team today. Yeah, they're only second place today. That, that's, that's all they are. FaZe Clan, come out on top. They get nine goals out of Sipical. They get six out of Mist. And first killer, who had had historically great numbers coming into action today, took a back seat and let his teammates work. And they got the job done. He only had to score three times, but also added seven assists of his own. And the hottest offense in the tournament comes through when it matters most. Up 3-0. They even forced the timeout out of Gen G after game one. They were teetering on the edge of destruction. But Sipical comes through. FaZe Clan are your Winter Cup champions. And now we send things back to the desk to wrap up the day. Oh, man. Well, you know, we uh, we thought it was over early. And then it wasn't over, but the, but then it really was Corelli. Faze able to take down Gen G that last game left no doubt. The phase from by uh, mm. it came through. <laughs> you saw it. You saw him go to work the first three games, Gibbs. You saw it. I, I heard saw, you talking hey, in the green room. Hey, last I saw two it. times, Gen G. They beat FaZe, they wiped the floor with them. There was a they lot did. of fraudulent takes about FaZe after that winter open. Do they still have it? Are they done? Is the mental chalked? You tell them, Gibbs, what are they right now? Oh, man. FaZe was like, oh, we're always number two in power rankings. And they started dropping on a lot of people's lists. Well, 
let's skyrocket them right back to right behind Gen G and right back to number two. <laughs> yeah, right back to number two phase goes. But today they are number one, taking down Gen G, and it was a battle. It was not easy. It looked easy at first. But I think that's even a better win for FaZe to lose three in a row to a Gen G squad and bounce back in game seven, win five nothing in the last game, maybe a couple goals in garbage time. But FaZe, that is a quality win and puts them right back in that conversation for the winter major of the one that that puts them in a great spot to even just make it there. But it puts them in that conversation with K Corp and Gen G of like, maybe they can do this. Well, for Curly, like how, how important is it for FaZe to win that game seven. Getting reverse swept yeah. in a grand final by the team that is always thought to be better than you. I feel like that, that's that got to tank your mental in a way. Like the, the worst second place finish you could possibly have in that situation. You are on match point. You get reverse yeah. swept. So important to win it there. Well, I feel like, you know, when you have uh, a team that has the expectation of excellence like Gen G has had, and then you throw that on top of three games in a row that you lost when you've been sitting on match point. I mean, that pressure, they feel that. Players feel that, right? No matter how many big games you've played. So I think it's actually more of a testament to the phase mental to regain against arguably the best team in the world right now. I mean, most yeah. people can make that case for Gen G coming off that fall major win. And to do that, to go three straight after, you know, admittedly sliding in the middle of that series, phase are the real deal. Stop it. They're real. And... But not only that, but first killer said earlier, like going through VOD review, he's like, he has basically said, like, I can't do it all. I need to have this be a full team effort. We need to pull a Gen G, basically. And we need to all work together, like, as a group. He can't be that carry. Like, he can't be the one just always doing everything. He knows his teammates are good enough. Now he's letting them do it on the field. And he said that before, but it's usually the first killer show. This was not the first killer show at all. Mist and Sith were phenomenal through this series and first killer just watched his team work and that's a fantastic fantastic spot for this phase clan team well it was an incredible performance from beginning to end a thrilling final here to the winter cup and let's talk to the champions it's time to interview them we got first kill on the line with turn Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined with the Winter Cup champion, first killer, my man, finally breaking through the top four. What are the emotions like right now? Uh, super happy. Um, I wanted to take down GNG so bad, so yeah, yeah, I'm super happy. Absolutely. I mean, you guys have lost the last four times you played against Gen G, but today was completely different. What changed and helped you guys get the dub? I think our team play. We were using each other a lot more and we weren't yep. just trying to like solo play all over the place. So I think our team play just, I mean, it just shows how good we are if we play as a team. Right. And you, you talked about the team play previously about how, you know, you were looking at what Gen G have been doing and how they utilize each other. Have you noticed that a lot of these North American teams have started to shift, not just you guys included, but most people are trying to use everybody everywhere on the field rather than uh, prioritizing those mechanics? Yeah, I've definitely seen those that like that starting to happen in uh, scrims and stuff. Like everyone's trying to just pass as much as they can. Yeah. But I think it's not that good though. You have to like find the right balance. You can't just, you know, try and pass every single second because it doesn't work like that. You have to yeah. find the right opportunity. So, yeah, I want to dive into the series now. I mean, there is a timeout called from Gen G right after game one, whenever you guys mm -hmm. were starting to gain momentum. That almost never happens. And then you guys would continue on in game two to win in OT. Did you discuss anything in that overtime? Were you surprised to see, or excuse me, in that uh, timeout? Were you surprised to see them call a timeout after game one? Yeah, I, I didn't un understand why they called the timeout. I think it was because Chronic. I don't know, he didn't feel that great individually, so he just went in training or something or something like yeah. that. And um, yeah, I mean, we didn't really talk about anything. We just kept saying, like, we got this, like, we're, we're a really good team. We got this. We can win this easily. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we just kept our head, head on. Absolutely. And, and things slowly started to shift. I mean, they almost got that reverse sweep, but then you guys come out in game seven, lights, out. How do you refocus your attention whenever you've just been getting beat the past three games to come out in game seven and smash them? Well, we kind of just took a second, took a deep breath and took, like we were just talking about how like we were throwing, like we were like just throwing the last three games and we were just saying like, we need to chill yeah. out, take a deep breath and just play how we play. You know, we, there's no need point in trying to play too fast. Like 
we just play our game and we'll end up beating them. Right, so, yeah. right. And you've gotten plenty of uh, chances to thank all the supporters and fans, but I just want to give you the floor real quick to to say something to all the people who have been doubting FaZe Clan. What do you have to say to the haters and the doubters out there? Uh, keep hating because uh, all it does is help us. <laughs> all right, man. Thank you so much. I'm going to let you go celebrate with the squad, but thank you for your time and good luck moving forward. All right. Thank you, Turtle. First killer of the gang are the Winter Cup champions after running this gauntlet, having to go all the way to game seven there in the grand finals. Quite a bracket we saw across the course of the last three days. I mean, it's Carly's, if there was one match you had to point out, be like, hey, that that's the match to go back and rewatch if you missed it. What, which one is the, the favorite you for you? Besides the final? <laughs> besides, besides the final. final. The final's yeah. pretty good, right? Uh, <laughs> quarterfinal between G2 and Space Station was mm. probably one of the better ones, uh, especially with how back and forth it was. Not a lot of faith in Space Station, maybe, um, over NRG and the way they came out of their group. So that was a fantastic series. Uh, definitely, if you're... I, it's the grand final, though. Like, let's just be honest. Uh, that, that's probably the best series we got the entire tournament. That was an amazing the event. year, maybe even because yeah. like that was a fantastic game seven. It goes down to the wire until, you know, a five nothing win. But at least we made it to Champions Field. Now we look at the winter points in Phase Clan. They were on the right side after that first tournament. They were in ninth. Now they're sitting in third by themselves, one point above G2. That has done wonders for them. We talked about uh, in the pre-show battle two major spots well now it's basically one we got dignitas sitting there with a one point lead over two teams and a four point lead over three other teams so it is going to be a battle in this winter invitational to see who makes it to san diego that's it. There's there's so much on the line here. This is going to be amazing, folks. And that's just to make it to San Diego, though. We're still we're starting to think about the World Championship as we are getting closer and closer to that. There, obviously, Gen G with a monstrous amount of points at the top. Face Clan, though, with this win, solidifying themselves in second place. And a lot absolutely of these, huge, man. Uh, go ahead, Gibbs. No, no, that was just simply absolutely huge for Face Clan, just for them to win this in a game seven over a Genji. Everyone's talking about Genji is best in the world, but like we all know face plans going to the world championship, but now we're putting them in that conversation again for winter major that they could win it all. We all know about the memes about fourth place over and over and over again, but face plans a real threat. And we thought we might've lost that like after one tournament, but they are right back here. At least we'll right now what? they're first clan in my heart. First clan. <laughs> hey, that's got a nice ring to it, folks. Um, but we are always building towards the uh, towards Land Diego there, folks. Make sure you get your tickets, exclamation point tickets in chat if you want to go and hang out with us in San Diego. Wonderful place, wonderful event, DreamHack and esports events all combined. One under one ticket, under one roof there, at the San Diego Convention Center. Exclamation point tickets if you want to get that, folks. And we're 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 plugging along through the season at this point, Corelli. We're 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 past the halfway point. We got one more event here in winter before we're playing in San Diego. Oh, man. And if this tournament was any indication, that Invitational in North America, like you guys were alluding to, with that fifth spot on the line, is Ooh. going to be a lot of fun. But you can't uh, forget about the rest of the regions as well, all competing to try and get to that, that big major coming up April 6th through 9th. It's going to be a wonderful event. I can't wait to get there. I'm just going to drive down. It's going to be a one. The, the weather out here is incredible. I've been seeing all my friends have been talking about, oh, it's cold here. Oh, it's hot here. It's 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 Gibbs. You you pick, you pick Gen G to win the fight. Yeah, that, you, you don't get to put. I'll do that. You don't, hey, no I'm way. a fake you homer all the way. I didn't pick him to beat the best team in the world. No, I'm no, 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 that's okay. no. That's okay. No. Not today. Proud, not today. We're not listening right, to folks. Right. Europe's broadcast fake kicks man. off at 5 p.m. Central for the Winter Invitational for Europe next week, Friday. You won't want to miss it, folks. Central European time, excuse me, not Central American time. There, 5 p.m. CET. Make sure you're there for me, for the, all the casters, for all the players, and for all the production. The back. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week for Europe. Sometimes it's gonna hurt
You can save an average of two times more with our smart savings tools. For everything we want, we're all better off with an ally. Yeah. 